Good evening, Extranet and Multi. Welcome back to the and Beyond Breakdown Stream. It's still doing the thing. <laughs> oh, did I do it too early? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just saying, like, uh, the cutout issues that we were having yesterday. No. They're back. Did only when we're streaming. Only when we're streaming. Yeah, it must be like a connection thing. Like, there's too many things going on. Ah, uh, dang yeah. it. Okay. Sorry. This... I'll, try to, I'll try to boisterous voice again to make sure it doesn't do it as much. All right. It's weird, because this doesn't even really happen during, like, our collaborative stream anyways. Like, when we stream for the patrons. Yeah, no, Every, it's only uh... when it's big deal streams. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if y'all want to see some more uh, Kuro and Ash shenanigans, the first and third Friday of every month, we have exclusive Patreon streams where we work on stuff. Sometimes we play games. Sometimes we do watch-alongs. Sometimes we just do fun drawing activities. Uh, it, it all really depends. Um, mm -hmm. So those are fun. But anyways, welcome to day two of our two-day and beyond season one uh, celebration stream. Yesterday, we watched through the unofficial pilot episode of and beyond along with the first five episodes uh which is humongousaur swamp fire ghost zone echo echo and the krypton vegeta spectacular vegeta. uh yeah so this today we got uh five more episodes to go through but starting with this episode we started doing q a streams uh i'm pretty sure there's a q a stream for every single one of these episodes right I'm here on sure. this channel along with uh, breakdowns on three of them, maybe. So we've already gone into detail pretty heavily on these ones beforehand. Um, so we might not be as, like, uh, particular with the, the fun facts and production things that we point out since we've done it before. This one's more of just hanging out, admiring our old work, seeing how far we've come, and having a chance to talk to you guys about, you know, the joy of and beyond. Uh, as you can see behind me, we are still selling our Taurus keychains. Uh, the keychains themselves will be selling for uh, another another week or so. Nine days and 22 hours. But the contest to enter to win a chance to be in the 5YL Motion comic ends today at the end of this stream. Right now it is 103 EST for a frame of reference. And we are going to be announcing the winners at 6 p.m. EST. So five hours from now, you guys have five more hours to buy a Taurus keychain and either forward the email or send a screenshot of your proof of purchase to Taurus keychain contest at gmail.com. You can see the rules are in the description down here. Uh, I'm also going to post them in the chat and pin the message. That way it should be pretty easily accessible. But after this stream, we'll be announcing six winners uh, to either cameo as themselves or have their OC cameo in the third episode of Five Whale the Motion Comic. And then from there, we're just trying to get the tour sales up. We have had uh, significant growth since yesterday, oh, yeah. fortunately, uh, which was great. Right now we're at 76% funding. We, we have sold 382. So we still have over 100 sales uh, to go. We have 100 and what, 18 is that? 118 left. So it's still a pretty tall order. What's up? Sorry, I'm talking over you, man. No, I, I just made a sound. Oh, I make sounds too. <laughs> ah, give me one. Um, Discord cut it out. <laughs> How about uh? <laughs> Discord doesn't like you. <laughs> Damn, I hope the audience are hearing this. Okay, I'll try to make a soft sound. Screw I got that one. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Why don't you give me a sound now? That that's wonderful. Thank you. Um, I've had caffeine. <laughs> I'm ah, a good yeah, me spot, right? me too, me too. Yeah, it's a caffeinated day. But yeah, yeah, so we'll be selecting six random people to cameo in the motion comic, which is coming next week. Um, but yeah, I I just want to say it's it's fantastic. We were even able to sell 382. Um, I feel like that's a pretty solid achievement. Um, so thank you everybody who, who's tried to give us a chance to get these keychains created. Uh, if we met our goal, uh, within the next nine days, then you will receive said keychain, which would be pretty bomb diggity. They're $13 USD. If you don't know anybody, I mean, if you're not able to purchase one yourself, 
if you possibly know somebody that can shoot them a message shoot them a link and say hey be really great to get these made they help fund our projects with the profits and also it would just be dope to give horace a little buddy here um, he needs his little dude if you have a horace plushie please make sure you get a taurus for him don't let him be lonely that is yeah he can't be lonely you can also check our schedule down below in the description where you'll be seeing what we're doing this whole stream uh in a couple of minutes we're gonna walk through the a nurse system commentary i did give us a little bit extra time to talk about this one just because it's a very special one to us for a number of reasons oh yeah, yeah. then we'll talk about kill miss we'll watch through ledger domain we'll take a quick little break before we delve into some q a then we'll finalize uh we'll finish off with the final two episodes arapella and zanelli we'll do another q a segment uh and then spend about an hour just pushing for these Taurus keychains, making sure everybody who had a chance, who, who wants to enter the Five Whale Cameo raffle had a chance to enter. Um, but yeah, so out of the, the next five, which one are you looking forward to, to watching the most? Honestly, I'm, I'm still, I'm still really debating uh, whether it be the Inner System or Zanelli, because I feel like those two are... No, I really like all these episodes. Yeah, they're all of good. them are really big production episodes. Like, aside from uh, uh, Arapella, I'm pretty sure each of these episodes took like about a year, production wise. Yeah, um, I I think even Arapella, maybe comparatively to the group is associated with, like in these five episodes, it's definitely not the biggest one, but at least compared to the first five, it's still a solid uh, improvement. Uh, oh, and yeah. it's a pretty big production. Like if we if we took the Jet Ray episode and showed it to the, the version of ourselves that made the Humongousaur one, they'd be like, "Whoa, they can move!" <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and there's voice actors too. That was when we had WN do the. Um, oh yeah, yeah. everybody WN. Yep. Oh dang. Yeah, and then Taurus too. We didn't know anything about Taurus. Good stuff. You know, oh, it, all of these episodes are the ones that I like have the most memory with because they took the longest um which yeah. originally was not the plan uh again this used to we used to shoot for this trend to be a monthly series <laughs> yeah um, that quickly snowballed though apologies but I, I still am super happy with the results i think um yeah i think just dis despite the length it's taken to make these episodes they were definitely worth it um they're, they're incredible products of uh, our, our skills and creativity, and the fandom sits with them pretty well, so let's do it. Uh, thank you for... I just saw some people in the chat just bought a Taurus keychain. That's, that's awesome. We're at 383 now. We've already sold three since the stream started. Thank you very Jeez. much, folks. We're making it. Little by little, we're getting there. We're getting there, and we can't do it without y'all. Um, but yeah, you want to go ahead and jump into the Inner episode? Oh, please. It's spooky season, so I'm already Let's set to do more it. Halloween. It's spooky time, baby. <laughs> yes. Here we go. The inner episode of And Beyond, our first, uh, first, first, a lot of firsts. Lot of, uh, first time we're getting other voice actors, first time we're doing uh, animated characters, um, first time we did 10 planets. And it's crazy that you could yeah. say the first time you've done that because you did it again in Zanel. Well, it wasn't 10 planets, but it's still 10 distinct, like, ecosystems. Yeah, environments, yeah. alien. Because uh, yeah. with, with Enur, I had, like, the preset of some of them already existing. Zanelli, having designed those from the ground up, like, they right. are two different literal monsters, but they, they are equally the same <laughs> terror. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I I think, uh, you know, this was a great one. Let's just get right into it and uh, give it a nice little watch through. Oh, and everybody can hear this okay, by the way? The ink tank. That's us. Lukic, Driba, any luck? So, oh. one one quick thing that I like about this is we didn't tell anybody we were even doing this. Like, not a soul. So, like, to people who were expecting a regular and beyond episode, all of a sudden Ben Tennyson comes on screen, fully voiced and animated, uh, speaking. I, 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 I can imagine some people were had minds blown. <laughs> like, what the hell is this? 
and it was They're awesome. Like, it's bad. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I mean Paxton knew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Paxton knew. Yeah. yeah. But we just kind of we were like, what if we just dropped it out of nowhere? I remember reading the chat when this first premiered, and like it was totally unexpected. The modifications have been made. The new enhancement will. And then you was Blue Kitchen Dream, of course. Well, of course. Who else? Observe. Oh, in the first instance of the Horus printer. Right. Also, this glow effect for Horus, I stopped doing because they're kept uh, becoming increasing layer issues for one reason or another. So after a while, Horus stops glowing. He's lost that special glow. That's fine. He's alive now. Sweet. Oh. But you're sure this plan's gonna work? They really don't do well around visitors. Last time I was there, they thought I was a monster. Well, can, can you, blame you blame them? As Posted. long as Horus keeps a low profile, we should be able to do a full scan of each planet in the inner system without being detected. Activating on V06. Programming coordinates now. Good work, guys. The hunt for Ziskir is on. Good evening, so good. Multidimensional travelers. Join me if you dare. If you dare. On a journey to the system oh. of Ener. See, this might just and be look because I love Halloween, but, but like. Just everything about this episode with the dialogue and everything just makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's pretty solid. Um, also, if you notice, he's moving when the portal opens. I figured it out. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it did it. Multiple movements. It's did nuts. you pre-render it and then put it in? Yeah, so what I used to do is I would... Uh, animate one thing put it on a color that he doesn't have this one was probably red drag it back into premiere key out the red and then animate more stuff on top of that render that out same thing and just keep doing that over and over and over again now i've discovered uh nests and folders and stuff so it's all in-house so to speak also it's a purple portal because of a nerf spooky music yep this is so great. I love that you like changed the tunnel too to like a dark and spooky mm -hmm. one as well. Also, we put introducing to imply that we're gonna be using him more. At the time, I'll admit I didn't know what else we were we would have done, but I was just like, we have a Ben Tennyson. We have options. Yes. So, we have him. He's here. It's yeah. hero time. <laughs> now we have a whole cast. This shot broke my computer. Oh my god. <laughs> Firstly, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's going to be so many instances of I'm sorry in this episode. <laughs> it's all good. Um, oh. But yeah, just yeah. Oh. so many different moving parts at different scales. Yeah. Welcome to the Inner System. One of the most feared and reviled collections You've also in two galaxies. perfected your performance as Horus. He's speaking much more clearer and slower now. Due to the perception oh. of such physically different species being feared and labeled as monsters. But, thanks to the work of the system's sole plumber agent, Scout Lunas, we have been granted special access to the strange topography Scout. of Ener. Yeah. Scout's been collecting reports the past few days. I Residents do love this bit, too, of, like, Ben on the screen being like an informant of the of like why and da 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 yeah. being a briefing it's it just seems really cool it's almost like a video game yeah the like, you're... the idea i had with it was to try to frame this episode as if like it's a uh, you're looking for the scare throughout the whole episode like you're on the hunt uh so it's sort of giving you like an assignment sort of when you're watching the episode and we did hide him a few times. There's one very obvious scene in the Sonar Aquids where you see him. But oh, yeah. I think he's hidden like two or three more times in this episode. I probably forgot about it uh, where I'm now. Let's see if we can find him. Creeping around. But well, he is hidden in this episode exactly pretty hiding. frequently. Horace, I'll need you to investigate each location. Keep your radar sharp, got it? Affirm Shit. You can keep your radar sharp, got it? Affirmative, Commander Ben Tennyson. You can just call me Ben. Affirmative, Ben. Ben. Let's begin our ben. terrifying trek at the dead center of the system, the birthplace of the scare, Aner Fatos. There's that uh ripple effect oh. that I use every episode. It's always somewhere. Oh. The 
Welcome to the ghastly rift of Enner Phaetos. Unlike most planetary systems, Enner orbits around a black hole. I tried to make it look star. like it was breathing Inside almost. Is a oh no, it, 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 it breathes through really well. It turned out really good. to be the remnants of an ancient cosmic giant. This is Phaetos. Apologies, the frequencies connection may weaken the further we go down into the rift. Yeah, so there's a lot of dead Easter eggs in here where there you'll see like uh um flashes of some of our previous videos this was from the power scaling video which is gone now and if you listen closely you could hear me say the word crowbar because gwen had like a wrench or something in an epi in race against time and i called it a crowbar and the comments were just oh, spamming like i forgot about yeah that. so all of, yeah so you just hear me pop in and say crowbar but that video is gone now so there's no proof now it's just yeah it didn't happen i'm lying the frequencies connection may weaken the further we go down into the rift Phaetos is home to the ectoneurites. Ectoplasmic life forms resembling ghosts. Oh. Many have varying forms, but one trait all ectoneurites share is one solid exterior vein that wraps all around their body. Oh, the blinky. This vein mm -hmm. acts as a track for their one singular eye to travel along. They also come equipped with a malleable layer of protective skin. These guys got a lot of wiggly stuff too. Um, put onto them, and you can also see them invert their colors uh, when they turn intangible. Oh. Now, what this right here was part of uh, your 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 fusion lab series, right? It was yeah, it was a Halloween tradition I did for like two years of uh, fusing. It's a creature that came to be known as the Octo Bear for October. Mm -hmm. Where I would fuse eight different bears together. Um, You've done that twice, right? Yes. I think the second one is the Octo Bear. I think that one right there I called something else because it wasn't quite eight. Um, but it's supposed to be like Freddy Fazbear, Yogi Bear, Banjo Kazooie, a bunch of. I, I can repost the art later today at some point. Yeah, we'll find the artwork. I really want to see it. Yeah. The atoms that make up their bodies are spread very thin, and thanks to the ectoplasm holding them together, ectoneurites. I love the designs you do for like little DNA stuff the right here. Of flight, like it's always fun to customize it. They can yeah. even spread their ectoplasmic reach to separate entities, living or not, adding telepathy and mental overshadowing to their catalog of creepy slurp, slurp. abilities. The drawback of this density shifting is that if their body temperature increases and their atomic vibration speeds up, their atoms will spread too thin and the ectoneurite's physical form will completely dissipate. But yes. photophobia doesn't stop them from leaving their rift. Following the lead of their high ecto lord Ziscare, they migrated from planet to planet seeking to take control of the populace. With their lord wanting to there he is. <laughs> too quickly, he oh yeah, we found him already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's done, bye everybody. We did it, episode's over. Great job guys. After making a brief return five ben just ago, flies in frame and punches him to Tennyson death. Tennyson had managed to scare by leaving a miniature artificial sun at the center of his castle. This castle is located on Enner Transil. Okay, one time, I think I've said this before, um, when we, we wrote the line artificial sun, you made like a humunculus joke or something, and I always think of that now. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Every time I hear it in the last ending scene, like the way it's phrased and worded, I'm just like, oh, Ben it's has a child sun. running around somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> just Which a little atomics baby. Birds, just, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. yeah. <laughs> Here to command them, the Ectonarites became enamored with the various cultures and lives outside their empty. So without Ziskara's racist control, control, the Ectonarites are free to explore other planets. In the inner system, and they are just friendly. The yeah. They're like, you know what? I actually don't like being evil. Run for your money. Yeah. I mean, money. There's. Oh. There was a Garfield Divinity. Oh, God! <laughs> I forget about Garfinity all the time, the Garfinity. man. Garfinity, yep. Oh, I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. <laughs> there seems to be no signs of scare here, and I'm beginning to lose connection. So let's visit our next stop, Edgar Kufos. I do like that you use the, the breaking signal as the transition for that. that Thank you. It was very clever. It was much better than having him fly from planet to planet. Takes effort. This was a great Welcome shot. I remember when you were drawing this one. Kufos, being oh, the closest yeah. planet to I, like I wish I made the foreground come into Kufos focus faster. Though. Hot, dry, and bright. Its terrain is mainly comprised of sand and stone, with large deposits of a mutagenic mineral known as corodium. 
Corrodium can be found in either crystalline or metallic forms and generate high levels of energy. This energy, though very versatile in use, is severely harmful to many organic life forms. Due to their species developing, ground it up and use it like salt. It's fine, effects, trust me. Which is a good thing, yeah. because corrodium can be found it all over the world. It tastes delicious. But nowhere more abundant than Kufos. Nowhere. Kufos These dudes are so greedy, they literally, like, <laughs> broke into their planet's like core for stuff. The yeah. These you draw them so cool, too. I love their looks. So much so they can lift up to 34 Oh yeah, I I'm a lot of these creatures. I forgot about that. There's a video. There's another video on this channel <clears throat> of me doing that. We have a lot of fun behind the scenes video on the videos on this channel. By the way, you gotta explore the rust bucket. Take a look around. We got some stuff on here. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm like a good chunk of these little beings just making weird sounds and throwing filters on it. Much of which many sell to other species as material for clothing. I got a t-shirt. The corrodium ore market they've cornered are what have gotten them the title, the Merchants of Ener. What are they selling? Kufan will wear much more jewelry Shirts? and articles to show off their status. As well as sleep in sarcophagus made out of pure corrodium. Okay, so here's the thing. I wanted their- first off, Mummy Horus is one of my favorites. Mm. Um, but, uh, the whole thing with- I wanted the, uh, uh, like the mummy stuff to have actual excuses why they're a thing. Like sarcophagus and, and and stuff like that. So like having it based that the sun never sets there is why they have uh they sleep in coffins. I thought was just a really fun yeah, idea. That's a good idea. They're like, man, the sun never stops. Also, I thought we put the scare back here. I guess I thought so too. Yeah. Whoops. The Kufans must sleep in sarcophagus. He disappeared. On Kufos, the sun never oh, no. sets. Wait. <laughs> The quality of one sarcophagi is a big symbol of status. Their competitive this market looks like Garfield too. wealth has led many oh, to venture off planet in search of treasures and artifacts. Records That's Garfaro. That multiple instances of theft Kufan temporarily so they just started to other messing with the humans. To harvest new yeah, they go materials. around to different planets so they can just steal materials. Yep. As a result of their interplanetary greed, they influenced an entire people's culture for hundreds of years and were worshipped as gods. <laughs> this left an impact on Earth so much so that they, they accidentally started a religion. Yeah, uh, they didn't even mean to. Yeah, either. they're like, oh <laughs> they man. Care. They still have monuments standing today. But resources weren't the only thing Kufans took from Earth. They also brought back some of their followers. Enjoying their oh, yeah. worship, they brought large groups of humans back to a nerd. Oh yeah, they kidnapped people too. No, they willingly the went. They did? Yeah, they just didn't the know though. Corrodium radiation on Kufos. Whoops. That's not what I thought was going to happen. Earth. So as a quick solution to their problem, the Kufan abandoned the mutants on the closest neighboring planet, Anner or Amero. So they did. Kufan them. just don't care, dude. They don't. Yeah. So they go to Earth, scoop up some humans, mutate them, then dump them on this planet and create another Welcome species. The Kufans had some coal. Well, plus, plus these, this planet used to be full of corrodium, too, but they mined it out no into nothing. You can see Kufos over there blocking the sun, too. This is one of my favorite landscape shots that I've done for the series. Oh, and the jump scare! Oh, I yeah, forgot! Fun. I tried to make this one and the ending Ghost Freak jump scare, I tried not to make them too, like, immediate, so it wouldn't scare you too bad. Um, but it's a Halloween episode, so we gotta throw some because in there. Because corrodium deposits were previously harvested by the Kuflan, Yoink. the planet has a very low level of radiation. Quarantining the humans on this planet gave their DNA time to adapt to the environment's mutagenic properties and evolve them into the pale, stunted so, creatures. So, I will say, with the Writhers, I wish I didn't make their design so complicated. Like, I like them still, but I, I wish I could redesign them slightly. Yeah, to be I, more simplistic. I like their design a lot too, but I can see how drawing them over and over seems a bit tedious. This is possible due to their close that was a good transition. You, you, you blocked that one out. I liked it. For their swollen brains. With only some remnant knowledge passed down through the generations, they live very simple lives. They're just chilling. They're just walking around. Wandering around and interacting with their that, like, couple seconds of grogginess you get when you wake up in the morning, that's just their entire mindset. Very few stand more than a day. I forget, is that screen new? 
Uh, no, I think it's um another epidemic sound one. In fact, it might be the That's same cool. one that from the plant in Methanos. I'm pretty sure it is. That's why I thought it was you. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, it sounds a bit like Roth. Feeling responsible for what they had done, every few years that Thef Kufan attempt to send some writhers back to Earth. Stop messing with stuff! <laughs> oh, this is a this reference to the Netflix Good. show, the um... Oh god, what is it called? I know what it's called. Glendale it's a, Place? Day, Daybreak. Daybreak. Because, uh, like, a good majority of that show, they're based in a mall. Uh, mm. And I watched the show just when I was writing the script for this, so I was like, I have to. It, it was a really fun show. These Thepfukons ruined so many cultures. Yep. No, this is just the, the humans that we see. We don't know about any other ones yet. Looks like some dumb doodles back there. Oh yeah, that's had a tattoo shop. That'd be called Tattoo. Love. Whoop. Just take him back. This is a good horse. I like this one a lot. Thank you. Oh, there he is. Oh, what was, uh... Oh, it was just the power scaling video again. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll make it public again. I don't know. Probably not. Disregard that. But yeah, there, yeah. there he is. There's the scare. I'm experiencing some interference. It feels similar to the blockage we were experiencing in Phaetos. This may be a lead. Let's follow it. On to the next stop of our horrific holiday, Enter Grenade. 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 Now this one wasn't uh, the toe picks, but you made it the toe picks. Welcome to the gnarly yes. Of the only thing we knew about Grenade, Milgan, and... The most um... life most of which are various species of but We only knew the, the, the planet name, and that was it. Mm. Um, so I wanted to do fun things with them. And this is to explain the Gordons and Omniverse. And appetite. Right, these are the results uh, from of Charmcaster. Mm -hmm. But these overgrown gourds aren't the only life on Grenade. This small crater is planet sits on the furthest outskirts of Enur, and will constantly be hit with space debris caught in the system's gravitational pull. Sometime that was so hard to figure out. <laughs> I love that effect, though. It's so good. That would drift in and out of Enner's pole. Because of the planet's viscous nature, at a time it acts There's like guys home world. and masses would break Big off. Big old booger of a place. Blur. Members of yeah, all of these are manual keyframes, not simulations. So, it's a bit tricky. Are bipedal cartilage structure life form standing at six foot. They possess the ability to absorb. I was so happy you let me do this too, to with like having eye guy and toe pick connected. Plasma. Yeah, I uh, thought it was a pretty creative concept. Home, they became stuck on grenade, and over the years succumbed to the harsh environmental differences. With Grenade's gravitational pull being 12 times that of Cytra, the Opticoid's soft cartilage bodies would droop and become bottom-heavy, and because of the corroding mutations, their eyes inverted into their bodies, making their vision confined to their yeah. mouths. These mutations also changed how they converted energy, now into a blinding light and a noxious gas that, when combined, can cause paralysis it's as well pick. as It's toe What a reveal. Yeah. That, honestly, that's such a great reveal, too, because at first you think we're probably adding eye guy to the inner the system, and it's like, psych! <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, huh? Yeah. Maybe take <laughs> the freaking pumpkin off your head. The Trenal Ogres live very complacent and peaceful lives, being so out of touch with the rest of the system. They Great shot, their too. Farming and building oh, homes out of their main I, I tried to make posters out of every Once section of this episode that we just ended, didn't end up using at any point. Hollow and Knowing how often the planet is struck by mm -hmm. debris, many also build homes in the sides of open craters. They're hobbits. Yeah. To that of an underground <laughs> they are hobbits. Because they're able to they're Halloween hobbits. Beings, it is also their main food <laughs> Hi, source friend. and clothing. Treadle ogres aren't immune to their own abilities. <laughs> I don't know so why I keep doing see. that, of like one posing sexily every Sexy episode. aliens, man? There ain't yeah. nothing wrong with sexy aliens, bro. I mean, yeah, they're fictitious, it don't yeah. matter. We're not the only beings in the universe that have sex appeal. Okay. That Treadle little pumpkin's so upset, though. Abilities, <laughs> so it's very common to see them wearing gourds as Ooh. masks so they don't accidentally paralyze their neighbors. Oh, pumpkin horror. Hear me out. <laughs> oh, this one noise you make here, I love the. Oh, the goodbye? Yeah, the. <laughs> Dude, I love it so much. Mm. I don't know why. <laughs> I like wait for that when I rewatch this episode every time. <laughs> oh, whenever I hear it, it makes me want to yawn. What's this? <gasps> oh, yes! Fish. Very now this one's completely yours, water. right? Water uh, well, aside from the planet name, yes. Okay. Jet black. But that's not the only reason you won't want to fish here. The Sounds like Mario. Oh! The, the millet blackish. 
Slurp, slurp. Oh, I love these guys. Now, I find myself making underwater shots pretty frequently in and beyond, but also, like, every planet probably has an ocean, so it makes sense. I like that we're always diving deep and be like, what's in the water? Look at this thing. Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a ghost shark. Oh, but see these uh, cuts right here? Yeah, on the so this is before we realized with glowing effects I shouldn't have them attached. Yeah, same with same with Horus. Like, there's one shot coming up where you'll see his glow effect just looks freaking horrible. And I'm like, okay, we're not doing it anymore. Dude, designing these guys, I had a, a really fun time, though. They look like they take forever to draw. They do. I love this shot right here. Yes. I forgot. Oh, and, yeah! Uh, yeah, the Gannick LaGorge. Surprise cameo from uh, the, the, Kraken. the Kraken. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. This is a this is a dense episode. I wanted this to be a very, like, it has a lot of, of stuff from the show, but it all makes sense. I forgot a lot of, like, I forgot all about the Gannick LaGorge. I remember doing this, though. Take a rip. Ugh, the that's some good shit. And, are made keeping the happy and, well fed, and then the as thing as floating away. Balance. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on here. Reverse fishing. Oh, also that bird is meant to be a giant monster Psyduck. Because I just like Pokemon and I can't help referencing. Yeah, if you can't see its face, but it has those tiny Psyduck pupils. Oh my god. so upset. He's about to get shot. Buy a Taurus, folks. Please. Just gotta throw that in there. The Sonar oh, Aquids. Speaking of throw that in there, this was such a late addition to the episode. Serving this is the last last thing we did. Aquids. Yeah. Quadrupedal reptile I do like these guys a lot, though. Mm -hmm. their day fishing for their next meal. At the end of each of their support tentacles is a discharge... I like how he still gets to look like a millet laggish, too, though, because he's on that planet. He doesn't need to be a whole different thing. When capturing their prey, they will create a tough, sticky web from their thorax maw and will dip under the water surface using the web and their prehensile tentacles to quickly wrap and capture the prey. And then all those water effects, too. This, web to assist the this is a... Oh, I love this right here in the background. Oh, yeah. They work together, he gets possessed. Seriously, that without their Angry. Work, their will <laughs> I love... See, when we originally did it, uh, like, when I told you about that idea, it was just he possesses it, and then, like, just stomps him in the ground, but you gave me, like, this frame where he gets angry first, and it's so funny. <laughs> it's like, he's like, I'm he's, here. Yeah, what he's not just possessed, he's, he's, he's pissed. <laughs> he takes a second and, like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, what do you want? <laughs> I love it. I love the fact it's during the line of, like, they're very... We yeah, there are species too. Yeah. <laughs> Get back in there. The scare has no friends. No. I mean, even the people that were his friends, like, aren't really his friends. Yeah. Like, uh, fake Victor. friends out there. Kuro Skull, top left. This is it. Look at the. Look here, look here. There's like this weird overlap. I understand how it works now. Oh, I um, see what you mean. I don't. I don't know enough about like the specific programming terminology to tell you why it happens. I've just done this mm. enough to like know how, how it happens and how to avoid it. But I hate it. And what sucks the most is most of the time you're not going to catch it until after you render it. When you're in pre-export, when you're in the the project file, it's not there. It's annoying. Um, See, I, th I I ran into a similar thing whenever I was doing those uh, short Pokemon videos. Yep. Uh, having the Pokeball Horus or whatever, I give a glow effect to him whenever he like pulls the screen thing in. Yeah. And something similar happens, and I'm like, why? Ugh. Yeah. In fact, there's this one shot in uh, the motion comic. It happened. It happened again. It's very. It doesn't look this bad. But I didn't catch it until after I rendered it. I've already rendered episode one like freaking 14 billion times. I'm not doing it again. Um, but yeah, it's the scene where Vlad's sitting on the asteroid all sad. You'll see it. The, the glow effect just ain't that great. It's not that great. Uh, but it doesn't look like this, thankfully. Fuck. 
is abandoned and uninhabitable. With corrosion pollution so vast, it has created a mass comparable to a singularity. Since I will not be able to physically explore the terrain myself, I will be dispensing a miniature drone and broadcast the feed. Now, what's funny about this is like, it's as if Taurus would somehow be any more stronger than Horus to survive this. He's like, I can't go in there, but maybe Taurus can. Someone weaker and much less more capable than I. I honestly think it's more so he just is like, I know that I don't, I don't want to get destroyed before the end of the episode, so I'm gonna send this guy in. I love your beeping for him too. Thank you. The kid cutting in and out. He's dead. And just uh, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, buy a Taurus. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I was make more. Part yeah, part of me wishes that we had him like animatable at this point, but I think it's also kind of funny how he just has like the expression like just looking in uh, looking forward after Taurus dies. He's like, well, <laughs> that's just how just it is. Well, with nothing being capable of surviving that environment, I should have seen that coming. But based on the collected data we've acquired on the system prior, I will be creating oh, Yeah, he was like, bad idea. Exporting Taurus has damaged my artificial image projection capabilities, so I will... Oh, yeah. So, using the... the reason for the Vladius section being drawn by... But I remember it was a time constraint thing. It was. We did, we did work on this for like a year, but we were going to miss our Halloween deadline again for the second, like, for the turnaround of the year. And we wanted to get it out. So we had Rob do the Vladius section, and I think it looks fantastic. I, I think, yeah, and narratively it works well, too, because there's no visuals that they could have for this section. Uh, it would make sense. He'd just have to make it up. And, the re yeah, the reason why we made it all sketchy is because that's, some that's something that I would be able to do produce fast. Because we've seen Horus create simulations and holograms and projections. There's a very smooth, concrete uh, style to it. So we're saying here, since Taurus uh, damaged his like holographic projections, he's literally sitting there scribbling it out and showing it to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Primitive method. It's also reusing a lot of uh, Ben 10 Illustrated uh, of methods Lattice. of creation. Purely of stone, this planet currently has no I do love planets. the backgrounds the that you did for it, too. Thank you. This, this was the castles and like, the curves and everything. Planets were anthropomorphic carnivorous flying rodent-like creatures standing between two and six feet. They are said to have been a very powerful species of traits, giving them blah, speed, blah, blah. strength, blah, stamina, blah, blah. reflexes. We should have had one go blah, blah, blah. This, I wanted to, but I was like, oh, oh no, people won't like that. In the dark catacombs of Gladius. They were he always looked like a cactus to me in that shot. I wish I drew him in a different pose. energy of other species. From feeding on this energy, it would increase their own natural amount, and the additional energy they would possess would be expelled as a voluntarily emitted light from their eyes. This light had the ability to dampen synaptic currents and override them with custom yeah, ones created hypnotize by them. I love doing the, the sci-fi, uh, like, bullshittery with real science to, to make it work. It's so fun. But because it's a smaller set amount of energy, they can only affect the frontal lobe and influence the victim's motor controls. These abilities gave the Vladis the tools necessary to obtaining any prey they desired. That's kinky. And they did not hesitate to hunt. Turning the yeah. populace of their neighboring planet no shame, into a sure. source of food and no, no, no. I mean, consent would be nice, but like, you know, we should... Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> 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 then he's just got the big cat. This was the great Vlada extermination. Despite the extinction of the species, there are currently two living members. The first being the sample DNA stored within the Omnitrix worn by Ben Tennyson, dubbed Wampire. Jojo Pose. Wampire. is the resurrected Vladat leader, Lord Transl, who is currently imprisoned and the inert son. He's still there. To this day, Vladius is nothing but it's a really hot in there. dark time. Mm -hmm. I just received a care package download for Plumber HQ. Oh, what a coincidence. Now that this section yeah. is over, we can have artwork again. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. I feel like we should have made it the, um... Oh, God, the dog one was so hard to draw. <laughs> Welcome to the forest mood of Luna Lobo. One of the few non-harsh environments of the Nerf, Luna Lobo consists of... Yeah, Luna Lobo's pretty chill. ...a variety of non-intelligent mammal-type life which is perfect for the moon's dominant inhabitants, the Lavoans. 
The bones are anthropomorphic canine-like creatures that feature a Okay, so jaw. those who don't know, I hate drawing dogs because the snouts. Makes hunting a but I had so much fun with this section. And circle the prey through chase, and then use their howling to oh, and that's my dog's Frank. So go in for the kill. The one oh, which one's Frank? You're... The one that actually does the... Yeah, you're right there. This is him? It's... It's meant to look like him. the The patterning of his fur is the same as uh, as Frank's. Frank is his dog, by the way, folks. Yes. Is he here with us right now? You worded that might be dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> the uh, uh, my dad is currently picking up my mom from work, and he has him with him because the weather's cooler outside. Oh, okay. Well, here's your here's your couple seconds of fame, Frank. So that they can go in for the kill. Mm. See, okay, that because of the quick, one other thing with that shot. If I knew, because this is the one episode that we've gotten marked as a kid's video, yeah, and it's turned off comments and everything, this was this shot was originally really gruesome and was going to be bloody and stuff. It was going to show the pack of them ripping him apart. But I was like, that's too much. And I didn't do it. It's just the, the mouth transition. But if I knew what was going to happen with the uh, the like labeling of it for kids i would have kept them like tearing him apart mm, yeah we should have done the the bloody splat mm -hmm. it has been noted that because of the open and have like some of its spine hanging out of its tooth or something over exactly of game on luna lobo the bones will regularly sell pelts and meats to oh i love plants. doing this shot too this was a good shot too nature they will also chase prey for sport releasing them to run another day the bones typically live as they hunt in packs Packs will contain between six to oh, yeah, this individuals, was one of those examples of not tasks, thinking about the hunters and pacing. Ooh. Yeah, I put that howl in there just to extend the shot so you could look at them more. Oh. Despite their friendly nature, the bones can be very territorial. Once a home is marked, if any outsiders enter without permission, Mr. Lambert. Later, they're met with a That's from the Hulu shot. movie uh, QB Halloween, where. Uh, What's his name? QB was is that old? No, it ju it came out like probably the same year that this released. That's the um, Adam Sandler one. Yeah, hey, it, it has be. um, what's his what's his name? The Steve the, Buscemi. Yes, they they have him play a guy that's a werewolf in the movie, and I was like, I want to reference it. It's Steve Buscemi as a werewolf. It's really funny. <laughs> so I had to. We got it in there. In cases such as this, Lobowans have their own. I, lo I loved this. This was right. fun to figure out. The Lobowan race. Oh, yeah. Individuals each sit on the top of stone spires and attempt to knock the other off by howling. Hey! Hey! <laughs> the last on their spires. Yeah, the now that's one way to settle an argument. Despite the moon size, the Lobowan Dog population horse. I love is it. quite large. As a way to it does look good, but it's such a pain in the ass. Many will only be on moon to hunt or chase, and their residence itself will be on the planet below, and our Trensil. All the this fur is metal, to too. To scare as well, leaving only one planet left to investigate. What could it be? Oh. Who could it be? Honestly, my favorite of Welcome the inner alien. The planet of Trensil. This planet consists of land masses from various celestial bodies from the inner rotation of Ener. This is due to the fact that in the early days of the system, Transyl, being Ener's largest planet, was constantly thrown back Boing. and forth by Phaedos' unbalanced gravitational pull, causing Transyl to collapse. I feel like I could have made this planets, look better now. Resulting in Kufos losing one third of its original mass and the complete destruction of Ener Lobo. I also think my computer was just lagging so much, I just like kept placing keyframes and was just pole. praying time, it looked good. Species decided they needed to I do think it still looks pretty good. So they pulled together their greatest minds and all the Corodium that Thep Kufan were willing to give and made a super. Yeah, not all they had, what the they were willing to give. To yeah. <laughs> but what they created was much more powerful than they thought. The you see that, folks? They United, they're the, they're the best. State, but it also stopped its rotation as well as the rotation of every other planet in the system. The field created was so powerful it brought the whole system to a standstill and created and now we're back to the first shot. that stretch from planet to planet. It's almost as if it had gotten stuck in a web. Oh my god, yeah. this is probably the, the most detailed healthy. landscape shot that I've ever mm -hmm. done, period. And it is one of my absolute favorites that I've done. Yeah, no, it looks really great. Uh, I love how Thank it came you. out. And There's and like a full version, too, that we can look at and most of us somewhere. Transilians. 
Transilians, being the original denizens, are bipedal sapiens standing between six zap, zap. feet with asymmetrical zap. Yeah, so the reason it freeze frames, frames in the background is because my computer just could not handle it at the time. It's like, please stop making me move this camera. And causing mutations <laughs> that affect their muscle growth. Another or, repercussion of the abundance of corrodium in their system is that they turn transilians into living lightning rods. Lightning storms are frequent. Oh, wait, we missed the joke. Sorry. Frankenstrice. Zit, zit. Zit, zit. This is also, I think this is also a section where the um, sound effects there's got deleted. A, yeah. There's also a Zeke in the background, though. Yeah, they've even developed emitters. Yeah, the sound effects got deleted here, too. I don't know how that keeps, keeps happening. He's in this shot? He, he's, oh, he's yeah, right he, there in the back. He's back he's yeah. back there. He's back there. He's like, think, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, there he is. You can probably see it in higher quality uh, on YouTube. Mm. Even developed emitters and regulators to wear over their nodes, making for easier absorption and discharge. With all the currents constantly flowing through their bodies, they have a very high amount of synaptic activity, resulting in higher intelligence and understanding. This is also Slip. the reason behind them being the Vladad's choice Slip. of prey. The more synaptic energy, the more filling for a Vladad. I like that we, we brought back the super intelligence for their species too. I think that was a worthy yeah. addition. I, I, I just thought it was fun. Oh, and right here, if you listen closely, you can hear the Avengers theme song. Um, oh, just for yeah. a second, just because that's what it reminded me of seeing them all together. Like, you'll hear the dun 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 dun. And luckily, we didn't get striked. Beasts of burden and food. They would finally be free of their albino overlords only after they started to consort with their monstrous neighbors. With the help of their planetary neighbors and fellow victims, they there it successfully is. rebelled and put an end to the Vladas tyrannical I love the shots so much. Yeah. They're, I they're, they're, they're just throwing his head at him. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I I believe I still have the whole separate assets of this. I would love to make an actual poster for for this. Yeah, and get like a better look at it. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Tyrannical rule for good. They kicked his ass. This brought the different species yeah. even closer together and created the horrific, terrifying, monstrous, yet beautiful, what beautiful. planet of Inertransel. It's beautiful. And that's it. The episode ends, right? That's all? Well. Well. Oh, this is one you did as well. Yeah, I drew this. You can kind of tell. Um, we weren't. It was we, good. We got a lot better at drawing in similar art styles. I think uh, in Zanelli, there's there's a lot of artwork mm -hmm. that both of us did that it's kind of seamless. But here, you can pretty much tell who drew what. Now that we're exploring Trans, no. let's take Freaking a visit horror. to yeah. Scare and look for more information on the rogue Ecto Lord. Like I could take this off now. In case we experience interference again, I will be switching directly to my personal live feed, which I like to call oh, Horus yeah. Vision. Oh yeah, Horus Vision. Yep, the introduction we... of Horus Vision. Yeah, we And this did... was so we didn't have to animate him, like, as a third-party view. Yeah, I was like, we can't show the back of Horus, that's ridiculous. Plus it makes it more, more horrifying, like in a POV, like you are Horus mm -hmm. flying around. The front door seems to be open. I will proceed with caution. Goes on in. <laughs> Both doing his little narration. Yeah. All right, I made it inside. Such a good background. Mm -hmm. uh, I was programmed with the information that Thank you. artificial son would be here. Perhaps Where's his son? <laughs> Where's his kid, Benny boy? Father. Where's Father, your son? Where are you? Hey, Horace, what you got for me? My scans have found no privatosian energies here. So that's kind of a a a way to reference the pilot episode of and beyond saying even if we don't do an episode on it uh the information is still canon at least in terms of five years later so for us at least atomics is a privatosian a so i believe your artificial son has dissipated huh <laughs> oh no he died <laughs> damn it the ice pack ain't gonna like that cuisine finally <laughs> died out and it looks like those rejuvenation chambers have been repaired too I guess it really happened. So the last archived report, uh, I think that was the... That meant something. I forgot what that meant, to be honest. Um, it has been a while. I'll grab I think that's the, the day that episode premiered? It could have been. Make a new one. Probably. Good work, Horace. You're doing the plumbers proud. Now you need to get out of it. In case the scare oh. you sneaking around uh -oh. the castle. Uh-oh. I love this whole ending. It's so good. 
It's the first time really doing something like this, and yeah. it's so fun. One thing you can see, though, is if you look closely, you see these little angles and stuff. That's yeah. a poorly blended mask, because this whole thing is an image, uh, and I had to cut out the center for you to see. Um, my communications have stopped working, and something is disrupting my night vision. Um, what's this? A gift from the plumbers. The plumbers. It might be hard to tell, but I did animate his lip flaps for this too. You can only see it a smidge. Oh my god. Although it has been a long time, I suppose I should greet him with a friendlier face. Yours will do nicely. That's mostly oh. all you too, because like I didn't figure out a good ghost freak effect for your voice at the time, so that's mostly just your audio with a little I was gonna say on there. the that one, you can tell it's early scare voice for me. Yeah. Especially because, like, if you listen to the Ledger Domain one, like, yeah. ironically, the Ledger Domain one sounds closer to his Alien Force voice than his original, um, mm -hmm. which is not intentional. It's just, <laughs> there's so much time in between these episodes. Yeah. My voice yeah. just changes a bit. And I, I like to think that scare isn't breaking the fourth wall. He just kind of knows that uh, Horus is... Um, being watched, or like his recordings will be reviewed. So, yeah, he watches Ambion. Yeah, he watches Ambion. <laughs> but I like it too, because it's like he's addressing you. And then we had Paxton do an outro for us here too, which was nice. Can't buy that poster anymore either, though. I have it directly to my left. Yeah, I have it's it. It's on the wall still. I have it hanging up over there. Um, I had a post. This this bar right here is actually half of a frame. Some of my posters ended up falling because I didn't use strong enough uh, oh. adhesives. But yeah. Hey guys, Ben Tennyson here. Thanks for checking out our video. Why don't you give it a like and leave yeah. a comment telling us what your favorite like new alien was. Comment. Yeah. Stay up to date with you can't comment on it anymore. Yeah, you can't even, yeah. Join the this is the only one we say comment on the video, okay, too. I know. <laughs> it's hero time. Uh, yeah. So oh, that's we, so dope. There we go. That was uh, a ner. It's, I just... Oh. I like that there was enough stuff in there to enjoy this time around. Like, I've forgotten, like, a decent chunk of what we put in there because it's been so long. Oh, yeah. Um, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. I, I can see why people have it as their favorite, too, because of all the ties it has to, like, the, the Ben 10 lore. And it's got, like, a nice narrative. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Not, not to toot my own horn, I feel like of all the episodes, it has the most, like, believably solid of the lore because of, like, how much is integrated in there. Um, and also, shout out to you for even suggesting putting Zeke in, in the episode at all oh, to begin with. <laughs> like, you're like, what if we have a little plot thing? And I'm just like, that's crazy. <laughs> so crazy, it just might work. Yeah, my, my pitch to you was just like, I promise you won't have to animate anything. I got it, but let me do this. <laughs> Oh, dude, I'm I'm so glad because because we were gonna keep it just like we did have plans to do like a little bit of connecting stuff because we yeah. had the ideas with Forest. Yeah, evil Whenever Forest. Whenever we did this with Zeke, it was just meant to be like a one-off fun thing. But then we're like, we could keep it going and make a little plot line. Yeah. And how we snowball things. Yeah. Now it's a whole. Now we actually have a plan. Now we have yes. a plan. Um, <laughs> There's a big plan shout outs to the the taurus keychain again we're at 392 sold uh it would be pretty awesome to at least get 400 by the end of the stream we're 78 percent funded uh and at this during the events of this stream is your last time to enter the five way alchemia raffle afterwards mm -hmm. you'd be buying a keychain just for the keychain but hey it's a cool keychain and it helps us out it funds our projects uh and we're really trying to get this taurus keychain made um, you can follow the link down below. It's $13 USD. Thank you for everybody who's contributed so far, and hopefully we can get a few more in before the stream is over. <clears throat> so the next one on the list, what do we got? It's a... Um, uh, Big Chill, right? Yeah, Kill yes. Our Our first makeshift campaign. 
our first makeshift and the first instance of his fully movable puppet. Right, yeah, a lot of oh. firsts. And we had a big cast with this, too. At first, we were like, it was such a big move getting Paxton involved. Then in this one, we have Karina. Um, we have uh, both of us are in it. Kellen's in this. Hershey mm -hmm. and Fro are in this. Uh, AJ Beckles is in this, too, um, as oh, yeah. Rook in the post credit scene and as one of the kids. I think he was... a. Uh, Kenko or something. I forgot I who was so. who. Um, or Kellen was Kenko. I forgot yeah. who. Yeah, I Kellen forgot who was, who. was Kenko and one other one. I want to say AJ was. Two seconds because I forget the names of half the kids. There's 14 of them. Oh, <laughs> and uh, Commander Crow is in this too. Commander Crow Shea Sierra is voiced by my Crow buddy Sierra. Chris Crockett Sears. The name coming from, um, I wasn't there, but he tells me that he was being called up to, like, get something, um, at, on, like, a stage or something, and they mispronounced his last name, Crockett Sears, as Crochet Sierras, and it's just something that stuck with him, so when I, I was like, I want this character to be your guy, he could be whatever, and, uh, you can even choose the name, he chose that name, and Chris is also returning for the motion comic as the voice of Gotro. So you'll get to hear him a lot, uh, a lot more in that role. He does a great job in that role as Gotro. Uh, so I'm excited to bring Chris back. Uh, you, uh, you got them other names up there, buddy? So all together, which well, I'll do all of them in the actual scene. But from what I remember, I believe AJ played Smoothie. Smoothie, right. Yeah. Oh, Paxton says this was the episode I recorded from a closet I couldn't fit in. <laughs> Well, you got the job done, man, and, and props to you for the the struggle. You got um, you got to, you have a great performance in here. Um, it's so good. we also we also came up with like a canonical way to sell these plushies too. I feel like that was a good a good key to it because it was like in universe they printed so many we just got to get rid of them. The Taurus ones, it it was just too too much happening at the same time for us to really uh like integrate it into an episode. Yeah. Um, I, I had an idea for it, which I'll get into it. I'll get into it later, but it just it would have been too much too soon. This is but he was so hard to animate. I have a whole video of me animating him on the main channel, actually. Dude, he looks so good, though. Thank you. And here they are at the last episode. Oh, by the way, for those who don't know what Crochet Sierras is... He is a Musa Malmax, which is one of my uh, playlist aliens that I did actually during the Dumb Doodle stream originally for an alien called Slugger. Um, right, yep. Just a giant slug guy that uses stocks to punch people. Yeah, <laughs> Slugger, Slugger's pretty dope. Um, another quick fun fact, this rook is reused from the Everything the Omnitrix Can Do video. Um yeah. And I also, out of all the scenes I wrote for and Beyond, this is the favorite one that I wrote just because of the passive reveal that he's calling them about his kids. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of just implied throughout the dialogue until he he hits the nail on the head at the end. So I just like, I like that it was gradually revealed in the conversation. You realize what today is, right? Right? You right. realize what today is, right? Yeah, I know. Sorry. Responsibilities. Still away over in the honor system. Thought it'd be a quick stop, but I found a deactivated horse when I got here. Looked damaged, too. I think I need to stick around a bit longer. Really check things out. Last time you were late, the fellas threw a fit. Flew up here and trashed the whole base camp. Each you got some type of uh, teleported creature on that wrist of yours? Poor alert. Yes. I get it. You're my responsibility. <laughs> I do want to be there, trust me. I also think this handled things pretty loose. well, too. Where it, like, frames too. Ben as he's not neglectful right. towards his well, children. He just has a lot on his plate. Find the closest Horus and program him to coordinates. I'll send him something to give them through his teleporter chamber. Then, I'll be there as soon as I can. Sound good? Hey, don't ask me how to raise your kids. I'm just a messenger. <laughs> I love Crochet. <laughs> yeah, he's great. It's the boy! It's him, in all of his shiny, movable glory. Look at him, he's blinking, he's wiggling. Look at him. Uh, that is temperature-plated version 36. Mm, to serve, for Kilmus, right? Yes. So he doesn't kill himself. Today we'll be visiting the solar planet of Kilmus. Please keep all appendages inside the portal at all times, and please refrain from eating the green snow. 
the glow. You don't want to know what it's for. This is too much. A bit. Also, the green snow joke is um, because that's how the Necrophrygians give birth. The the green snow is their birthing vial. I did like that it changed to red though, and also that's disgusting, Ryan. Jesus Christ. It's in the episode. I'm explaining. <laughs> Different space, space background too. <laughs> Episode seven. There it is. Okay, this was one of the first instances of I didn't want planets all to just be balls. Yeah. Like, I know this doesn't make any physical sense for a planet, but I don't care. The heat given off from this core sits roughly around 14,000 degrees Fahrenheit and creates vast oceanic pockets. The drop shadow on the text there is a bit much too. In contrast, the surface temperature sits frigidly. I think this was made like on the last legs of like my old computer, and it was just impossible to preview things before I rendered them. So I really couldn't tell what things actually looked like until I was done. According to fossil records and recovered ancient tech. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, there existed a species known as the Eder Kenic. Oh, I love after Eder Kante, who designed Big Chill. To achieve interplanetary Very true. Travel. Rather than building vessels to travel off-world, they attempted to make their world mobile. I remember so asking you to extend the shot because I wanted it to last they longer in the pan. Because uh, this is this is the first time we really like established that like if you make a picture the same size as the screen, but then I have to pan across it, I either zoom in and you lose the artwork or you can't pan. But looks like here we we were figuring it out. Overheated the atmosphere burning up its oxygen and killing most all surface life in minutes. Tragic. <laughs> oh no, I forgot about that. A mass meltdown occurred, drowning the surface in molten metals as well as evaporating its Every oceans. episode has to have a bit of sad. Yeah. We theorize that over the but this is just evolution. So years, it's survival of the fittest. They tried to make their planet a rocket. Planet, it down into yeah, you can't make a planet a rocket. And that shortly after, the a moon, maybe. Ice age level temperature shift in attempts to repair itself. Through this ice age, the ocean's vapor recondensed. Cooling the planet's surface to a solid metal. This capping off the majority of the planet's heat leak. The outermost layers of the ocean were frozen into caps. So that still that, that's away. awesome, man. I really the like the formation of this planet. The Thank you. This it's Kenneth real. Is this is really good. Life. Thank you. Do you like it, Mochi? No, oh, she's sleeping. Welcome Dude, okay, the ice in this episode. Oh my god. <sighs> Having to differentiate and shade it mm -hmm. to give depth is so... It came out really great, though. I like the, the pants and the cloak, uh, the little scarf thing here you gave to him, too, to give him different ways to fold up. I love that. that that's very creative. Accompanying the ability of flight, they possess psychrophilic glands throughout their bodies that secrete a mixture of liquid nitrogen and water. These glands do two things. Regulate the temperature of the body and provide... Oh, this is our first time seeing stuff like this too, right? Oh, the horse windows? This is the first time. Damn. Yeah. Circulatory system, meaning they like are this detailed, I guess. ...and lack the veins and arteries necessary to circulate their blood, regulating their body temperature. Because of this, they feed on metals and molten ores, <laughs> using their glands to cool the metals to a safe, balanced temperature that is not too hot to cause them harm, but still hot enough to keep them warm for roughly six to eight months. Through glandular control, they can also become intangible, heating their bodies, turning them into a permeable state, similar to a sulfur gas. They use this ability to traverse terrains that by normal means would be untraversable. In this Go state, on in they're there, unable buddy. to breathe. So those psychophilic yeah. glands come in real Slurp. high. Since the chemical composition of their bodies has such a high freezing point, <laughs> anything they come in contact with can be susceptible to freezing. The necrophergenes are a very antisocial people living... Oh, there's a thermoscorian before we actually reveal them. That's what they're called. Metal acquired yeah. from the planet's core. These nests are they swam a bit too far out. ...to keep the necrophergian nice and warm while it Yeah, rests. necrophergians sure don't like making friends. ...far away from others, as to not be disturbed. Due to this independent style of living, Kilnis lacks any form of society, making living here a survival of the fittest. Because of the harshities of the planet, many actually choose to venture out into the <laughs> Yeah, they're all like, man, screw that. It's hard out so, there. But no real quick, I'd like to specify. Yep. I've seen so many comments saying, isn't Big Chill's planet that half and half planet? 
You're talking about Mikadilly, which they go to in Ultimate Alien. It is referenced here. They formed here a colony is. there, but that's not where they're from. They no. even say that they are migrated in that episode. Yeah, I so. mean, in order to understand that, though, you actually need a very dedicated skill uh, for understanding Listening. more. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's fine. I was gonna build up to it to make it more. Yeah, I was. Yeah, paying Sorry. attention. <laughs> yeah, the bitch who was on the half hot planet. They, yeah. they're there. You mean the That's one they that live. they don't live on? Wow, yeah. who would have thought? Nah, dude. Didn't you know that Siphon and everyone else in under was from Earth originally? Yeah, they're from Earth, man, because they're there. They have to be from Earth, right? Yeah. Also, this is fridge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we see um, the Mr. Smoothie. I, I like the, the Mr. Smoothie faces you gave. Uh, Thank the you. Cups. And this is from the and beyond uh, episode zero right there. Yeah. yeah. So I this is Fridge, poster. which was part of Albedo's trio of actors. So after Albedo went nuts and got jailed again, he abandoned all his friends. So they could just kind of, you know, they don't got a lot going on now anymore. He's just chilling. Yeah, he's just... Yeah, all right. Thanks, man. <laughs> I love his mustache. And his hair, too. They did a great job with their different designs. There it is. Oh, this almost broke my computer, too. I did that frame by frame, but it forgot to make their wing. <laughs> now this right here is the exact sound and audio from Save the Last Dance. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't get striked, but it was very quick. The instinct to carry out this reproductive cycle is so strong that even Commander Ben Tennyson's necrophagine form, Big Chill, is no exception to this. Now this is also to refresh people's memory that yes, Ben does in fact have children, so that when we do the ending, it's not suit like even if you forgot, here's your reminder. Step in and relocate these adolescents to their native home world, where Ben has taken the responsibility to check in routinely. Although he is often prone to being late or missing these gatherings completely, much to the offspring's disliking, hence why I am here instead of on Snelly. Oh, oh man. Man, yeah, we've we foreshadowed Zanelli a lot, huh? It's because it was like the one episode I knew people really wanted to see because of the, the pop ups that talk about there being multiple lizards. Due to poaching as well as the predator of storms, the psycholeotrons. Oh, I love that we did these things too. Mm -hmm. It's never canonically stated that they're from the same planet, but it's framed as his predator in the show so I thought it made sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're they're from the same planet. Psycholeotrons are large quadruped Vespa with a body length of about 13 Which, feet. Which, amazing artwork by the way, right there. That's a great drawing of one. Feet. Thank also you. equipped with psychrophilic glands, they possess many of the same abilities as the Necrophrygians. The only notable difference in ability they possess is their most dangerous, being their hypnotic gust. This ability is a combination of a... This oh, this was... This is like a, a partial frame by frame with him chomping. The combination of it took two so long to draw this because I made it so detailed. I also forgot his antenna. And put the prey into a hypnotic state. They there use this goes. ability as their main form of hunting, having the prey willingly surrender themselves to the cycle the Optrin. Oh, God. We didn't get... Flagged on that episode. <laughs> and this whole transition to who? Oh, yeah. He is coming for the children. <laughs> Over the years, Necrophrygians became wise to this hungry, hungry hypno and now rarely populate the surface, making the Psycholeotrin's main food source exclusively fresh hatchlings. Due to the amount of time between Necrophrygian birth cycles, and now the Psycholeotrin will go yep. years on end without eating. This starvation combined it's with the circle of life has turned them into an endangered species. This is a cool ship. I like this. Thank you. Fun fact, poachers use the pheromones and ground up scales of the psycholeotrid to make optical ingested drugs called trip drops. Okay, so <laughs> there's an outtake. <laughs> when yep. I did the recording for this part, uh, trip drops, <laughs> it was, I just referenced a song. I forget the name of the song, but, but it's like trip drops, drop top. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it was like bitches all up in my something. I don't know. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. We also put, kept it in the episode too. And I was like, eh. 
we don't, don't we don't want him cursing yet. It was a bit too much, yeah. Yeah. Appear to be the apex predator of the planet. Do drugs, kids. Do them. Do not stand the test of time. I want no. all the children out there. Buy a Taurus. Don't do that. Yeah, buy thing. a Taurus instead, actually. Stay off stay off the streets, don't do drugs. Buy a Taurus to protect yourself. Um nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. If you get mugged, you can you can send him to go get the plumbers for you. If you get mugged, go go get a hug. Premiere. There we go. Traveling back down past the fresh oh, caps, we find ourselves in the waters of the Doused Divide. It's the wet world. A large oceanic ring surrounding the, the Doused Divide. Core, sits Goldilocks between two extremely different temperatures. This is one of my favorite environmental concepts from the series. series. Salt capped crab, cephala imps. I love whenever you do these Boyatula. little creatures too. In the I like animals and creatures. I need to. <laughs> forms of into theta. I was gonna do a lot during the Snelly one, but I cut them. Its metallic floor. Time. And on this floor, we find the home of the Thermoscorians. These are Kellen. Metallic shelled isopods varying in size. The Thermoscorians possess thermophilic glands throughout their body. Working similarly to the psychrophilic glands of the necrophrygian, these two provide oxygen in temperature regulation. The notable difference, however, is that these glands also control the metabolism, meaning that if they want to keep warm and breathing, they need to keep eating. Whether it be seafood or random metallic oh, debris, bubble most fish, anything yep. that passes a Fro fish. Yeah, there's another fro cameo. We told you, he's so everywhere. Ma becomes lunch. You could say they have an iron stomach. Ha 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 ha. Through Laughter required. We do this kind of different, like, every time. I love it, though. Laughter required. The eyes in the background. To a malleable state, allowing them to stretch and contort their forms into an array of shapes. They use this ability mainly to burrow into the ocean floor to rest. The Thermoscorians are a very active and competitive people. Oh, these guys were so fun to draw because it made them rest them. from the moment they rise to the moment They're they They're great. Draw. I love these creatures. Thank you. They typically spend their days playing and socializing, but there are certain individuals of each group tasked with work duty, hollowing structures for homes, fishing for the young, and working. I remember to this being hard to animate too. Them. These workers ensure the happiness and I don't safety why. for their family. Let's see. When reproducing, expecting thermoscorians will lay a mound of eggs and burrow on top of it. Oh, to that wasn't that bad. Warm, melting their shells into the ground to ensure no loss of heat. Once the eggs hatch, the mother superheats its body, making it soft and malleable so that the hatchlings can then feed on it, fueling the spark for their so own she, thermophilic glands. She sacrifices herself to become feeding, food. The for hatchlings babies. will rocket out of yep. the mother's carapace <clears throat> and be adopted into their previous cast. A little sad moment, but average, I think it's a nice one. Will birth about four yeah. hatchlings. Of those four, nearly all make it to full maturity. There are no known predators of the Thermoscorians, but every now and then some oh, here we go. missing. Most are thought to have sputtered out and just simply sank to the depths, while some believe they are kidnapped and consumed by Necrofred. So th this was a, a combined a cool effort. Shot. You did the ice in the background and I did the ship. Yep. Yep, but it looks very well blended. It looks like only one oh. artist did this, so I think we were getting Oops. a lot better at it. And I like for a split second you see his head, his eyes, and his mouth. Please do not harm me. Uh, activating uh, d d d tekaton blast recoil. Oh, man, it's just making just stuff up. <laughs> That's Kellen. Ben's key code. That's AJ. So he's not coming again. Is That's he? also Kellen. Um, your father, unfortunately. Oh, man, oh, I'm one so second, crazy. sorry. It's all good. And then. Hershey and Fro are some of the various overlapping voices in there. Um, actually, I don't think I was in this episode as anybody. I think maybe I did some of the big chill sounds, but yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm in this. Um, but yeah, you can see the most of this is just one shot of Horace, and this is like a minute, minute and a half long sequence. Um, so we, this is what really pushed us to try to make Horus super animated because we're going to be looking right at him. Apologies. It's all good for one interrupted shot for a long time. So we had to make him interesting. Quiet down, siblings. There's Karina. They love, did an excellent job. Yeah. Ben's most assertive offspring. That must make you Smoothie, Kenko, Ishiyama, Slurpee. I think that's Maxwell in the back. Cut it out, asshole! 
<laughs> Brass <laughs> almost cursing. Yeah, I think that was one like we we were workshopping. We were like, what should could, could she call him? As like an insult, and we're like brass hole. That's the one we landed on. His names, but he is not our dad. I mean, genetically, we call ourselves the Ice Pack. Well, your father also calls himself stupid names, so you know that. This is such a fun scene to write. Yeah. He doesn't even realize it's mean. He's just on it. And then I love right here. You can hear uh, Kenko say like Max's name is stupid. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but, but beside that, the reason I'm actually here is because your father wants you to know he really cares about you and will visit you as soon as he can. He wanted me to bring you this special gift. This metal is Ouroborium. A glistening ore infused with mana is rain. Now, did we actually show any Ouroborium in the Ledger Domain episode? No, unfortunately not. I completely forgot about it <laughs> when writing the episode. <laughs> and I just, by the time we were in, like, uh, uh, late production with that episode, I was like, oh, I don't have anywhere to put it. This is just going to be the hint towards a future episode, then. Yeah, that's fine. Machine stone can only be found in the kingdom of anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible! Oh, well, your father assumed since it was such a rare material that it may have been considered a delicacy. That's not how it works at all! Not bad logic, though. You know, Ben is trying. He's given it his... Gross. Oh, oh, I talked right over it. Let's, let's... Our first cursing in yeah. and beyond. If he really cared, he'd know that. Yeah, that shit's fucking gross. Yeah, that was it's a direct gross. response to the inner episode getting us uh, uh, struck and comments turned off. So... Yeah, every episode from this point forward, we feature some type of undeniable, please do not mark this episode. Um, mm -hmm. And there there it was. Here it was towards the end, so it's a little out the way, but it's still there. It's valid. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't you can't put a, that shit's fucking gross as a thing for kids, so, you know, get hey, fucked. Maybe he did send us a snack after all. Oh, yeah. God. He had to get no destroyed somehow. I am pretty hungry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tonight. Looking like a oh, snack. You're looking like a snack. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I should really get going. No! Why don't you stay? I love this too with the puppet. You can finally see how nervous Horace is in yeah. general. Like, that should really get going. And I drew this part. I love this drawing so much. So, all together, which I have their wiki thing up so I don't mess up their names again. Uh, starting from the left going right, uh, we've got, uh, on the top left, cotton and candy. Um, because cotton candy, whatever. Yeah. They're all uh, supposed then, to be references to things Ben likes. Yes. Uh, then the spiky haired one to, to their right is pop fly. Yeah. A baseball one, term. Yeah. Uh, then lifting uh, his head up, that is Kenko. That is the second oldest of all. Well, they're all the same age, but second, like, in command of them, kind of. Um, then to his right, drinking the drink is Ishiyama. To his right is their leader, Glacier. Mm -hmm. uh, down below her, you have Cube wearing his uh, Ben's clothes from... Uh, uh, I forget the name of the episode in Omniverse. Is it just special delivery? Yeah. Oh, and they're not... Yeah, they're either Ben's interests or just ice terms. Yeah. Yeah, like ice cube. Just kind of like random things yeah. in general. Below him, we've got Slurpee, uh, which is meant to be a visual reference to uh, the YouTube dong, just because I, I thought he looked kind of like a Necrophrygian. I thought it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> then we've got Smoothie on the Holding Taurus. Yep. With <laughs> a square a head, by the way. Oh, that's true. Dang. Those um, head shapes. Consistency, man. We're just like the real show. Yeah. Um, he, uh, Smoothie is fending off Snowball. Um, and then the one super close in him is Maxwell, which Maxwell yeah. is the smallest one. And you'll notice there are three missing. They're off on their own adventure. Uh, maybe one day we'll tell their story, but for now it's not relevant. I do want to say, though, this right here, seeing them pull the squid out of the head, 
I wasn't a huge fan of because the way I imagined it um, is the Horus bodies. You would take the squid and put the center chamber around it and the tentacles mm -hmm. hang out and then you just plug the Horus head in on top and that's its brain. But uh, yeah. in this point, like you see these tentacles, but then he's also got a squid in his head. So it, I, I am now imagining the Horuses are made of two squids per Horus. That's why yeah, they're so expensive. I can see that. Yeah. Them all laughing and crunching yeah. and stuff. <laughs> so good, man. This is this one and the inner one are the ones that feel the most like an actual Crazy episode. How many of these things we go through. Mm -hmm. Horus. And then Rook still, after five years, he's still driving the proto truck, truck, still wearing the proto armor. Rook doesn't change. He no. finds something and he sticks with it. Also, the proto truck is pretty recognizable, so you, you'd see this. Must be made now. of a pretty cheap material, huh? The bio artificial squids we grow cost about twenty three thousand pounds of tatin. Twenty three drains the plumbers a significant amount of. Also, AJ is fantastic as Rook. Oh. I can't wait for you guys to hear him in the well, motion. I kind of left the horse printer on overnight to screw with Blue Kitchen Dreba. Wouldn't it be funny if they walked into over 200 good evenings being shouted at them? So 200 is referenced the goal that we needed to hit. Yep. Uh, of which all the different yeah. <laughs> mixed... I forget it's mixed... Oh, you can see the cursed round Horus. Yeah, the round gen. Horus is in there. Your original sketch of Horus. You can oh, see dang. one one plushy Horus in mm. here. <laughs> uh, and here's the Horus printer again. Oh, dang. <laughs> and then just shut the door. It's a, it's <gasps> kind of funny, right? You printed 200 extra Horus droids just for a prank? I didn't know they were expensive. They break all the time. Only reason we're bringing this one back is because Very the bad. video card kept recording after it lost signal. Why would someone deactivate a Horus if they're just going to break it? Scary. And then, yeah, so this is the horse from the last episode, even though he's drawn in the newer art style. A scare. Hey, you think my Omnitrix could read it? You are changing the subject. What are you going to do when Magister Patelide finds he's out? He's not going to find out. I'm sure we'll think of something to do with the spares. And even if we don't, who cares? What's a few extra horse droids lying around going to do? They're harmless, right? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> And in case, you, in case you missed the last stream, uh, before we settled on doing the Taurus keychains, we were planning on selling Horus variants with the Zascare Eye instead. Mm. Uh, I felt like keychains were a better idea. Maybe I was wrong, but... I think it's wor I think it's good. Yeah. If anything, we still have possible things in the future where we could do variants. Yes. Right, and we are at three ninety five right now, so we did sell a couple more during that stream. We only need to sell five more to hit uh five hundred sales. Nope, sorry, my bad. Four hundred sales, which is a great goal, but we need to sell five hundred in order to get these made. So if you're able to grab a Taurus, please do so. They help fund our projects. It would also be dope to get them made. Um, but after this, we have the Ledger Domain episode coming up, oh, which I know dang. we've recently done a, a big breakdown. This is probably the biggest production on it i know lizard world was more like has more lore but in terms of making this all the different roles the cast we had um and especially because horus this is the first one where horus is isn't teaching he's learning um yeah. so it's like everybody is talking to horus and giving him information um so this was the hardest one to put together this is also the first time we really used julissa as our voice of Gwendolyn. Um, we worked with her a little bit before, um, and she's she's great in the motion comic too, honestly. A lot of and beyond episodes are kind of just like testing grounds for working with voice actors, uh, and we love working with Julissa. I can't wait for you guys to hear. She won't be in the first three episodes, unfortunately. You're going to have to wait till the next batch because readers of Five Way all know Gwendolyn doesn't show up till uh, Chapter 5. Um, but she's already recorded a great amount of her lines. If you're a patron currently... You can watch uh, our video diary where you can hear some behind the scenes already. You can hear some of her lines. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we got the Ledger Domain episode coming up. Uh, this one's like pretty long, right? It's like almost a full half hour. I believe so. Yeah. This this ended up being so much more. It, it originally was going to be long, actually, um, because it was going to be he oh, what one? would run in. Huh? It was going to be the what one? It was actually going to be longer originally because there was going to be more characters that he would interact with and more stories to hear. But 
I ended up cutting a lot of stuff because I was like, this is gonna be a super long episode. Yeah. It's gonna take forever to make. I think we were gonna we were talking about actually like showing hex at one point too. Um and we were just like, nope, can't do it. But yeah, due to its its yeah, twenty seven minutes. Due to its incredible length and the fact we already did a full detailed breakdown of this episode, uh let's just get through it and have a good time and enjoy it. Um yeah. it's it's rare we, I watch my own work for fun. Uh, it's mostly just to, like, critically review it and see if there's anything I gotta change. Uh, but here we go. Good evening, Professor Gwendolyn Tennyson. Horace, great to hear from you. Did you receive the data package I sent you? Indeed I did. Your request for me to map a safe route to tour Ledger Domain for your university's field trip next week has been approved. I remember we debated a lot really about the lore reason time, for this to even happen, and this is what we settled on. First, so I can have time to grade all these papers. Oh, hold on. I forgot to so transition the window again. Expendable. There we go. Then... <laughs> I didn't make it too far in, though. I did this last time, too, but I noticed quickly. She also means you're more expendable. And there Ben then... is again doing at the last episode. Although, quick thing I do want to point out. Um, I, th I I started thinking logically, like, it's kind of ridiculous Ben would need a jacket if he's wearing his plumber suit, because shouldn't the plumber suits become well-equipped? So I imagine that th his children bought him this coat uh, as a gift and also a passive way to motivate him to come visit them more. So he wears it when he's there to to make him happy, even though, logically, his plumber suit's probably warm enough to survive Gilmas. Back and I'm trying yeah. to track him down. So it's for them. Last time I saw him, he was in command of an alpha rune. Until I know what he's up to, I have to cover all my bases. Yep. Horus, can you make sure to gather as much info on the alpha rune as you can while you're there? Sure thing, Commander Ben Tennyson. <laughs> it's just Ben. Anyways. Also, that keeps happening. Yeah. Because it's a different Horus. Yep. He has to tell, to tell every Horus. So he won't be able to contact you until you return. This is also lyrics to the Ben 10 theme song the uh, in a different font. On course. It's easy to get lost and end up in the wrong crowd there. Good luck, little dude. I'm opening the door to anywhere now. See you in a little bit. Good evening, extranet and multidimensional travelers. No glow. Welcome back. And beyond, where we plunge into the void. Honestly, I kind of like the no glow. Multiverse. Yeah, I do too. It, I added the glow originally because he had he had nothing else going on. Now he doesn't need it because he moves and he blinks and he yeah. And 522 a reference to the amount of uh, horse plushies we sold. But you can call me Horus. Today we'll be trekking the most magically mysterious realm of the Inua dimension, known as Ledger Domain. Please keep any accompanying rodentia stored within your designated headgear. We are not responsible for any disappearing acts. So tiny compared to the door. And you can see the back of him! Oh my god! <laughs> First time! <laughs> Horus. Oh, so that, that was the scare rerouting Horus. Welcome to the magical realm of Ledger Domain, a rifted energy pocket existing exclusively to the Inua dimension. I like to specify, e and this is not a plan. Yeah. So, the energy that makes up this pocket is known in many cultures by many names, but all are the same life energy that we refer to as mana. Mana can be found in all living things. Mana, mana. Nowhere as abundant as here in the domain's capital, the kingdom of any. Where am I? This is the first time Horus is really thrown off base, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. We, we get to see a lot of map, his personality in this episode. Yeah, I really love that. And I'm currently in the forests of Zorister. But not to worry, we shall make haste on our way to the castle. Well, it seems as though I have no information on Zorister, so I will describe on the way. Uh, it's very <laughs> Imagine dark, if this was the whole episode. Heavily wooded, Just lost in the forest. Creepy. Yeah. Creepy. I can hear something near me. <laughs> Just the... <laughs> I love him falling in frame Princess, in like every section. Carefully, mm. little one. Oh, 
Kellen Maybe as Kellen. Yeah, this is probably the most impressive voice I've ever heard voice. Kellen do, and I'm not saying oh, that just because it's for our project. Like, I am called Caledrin. I don't know how you could ever hear that and know it's Kellen there. unless you already knew. That sounds nothing like him. With it's incredible. Care. Whoa, Sornito. It is quite dangerous. Ah, oh, shit. What brings you, little one? Ah, yes. Uh, well, I'm on an educational survey. I was meant to arrive at the Kingdom of Anywhere, but the door took me here for some reason. I sense little mana within you, which has tangled your spell. Mm. Your Big bird. lifeless aura <laughs> can serve <laughs> He still has his other arms crossed behind his back, too. <laughs> yeah. But now I see that you are a machine. <laughs> How peculiar. Well, I greatly appreciate the rescue, Caladrin, but I must be on my way. There's places to map and info to record and all that. You understand, right? Information? <laughs> you need a friend. <laughs> I Someone can talk to this. <laughs> no one else is know here. Know everything about <laughs> this forest. It's been some time since I've had company to share my knowledge. Dude, these with. angles were so hard to Would figure out because I'm not used to. I wasn't used to it at the time. Mm. Oh yes, please. The bird Excellent. flap transition was, uh, came Let's out a lot better than I thought it would have. Origin. That. Oh, in the, st the, of the story of sections for yeah. this eldest stylizing of all of them was so fun. Territory to none but the wilds, the wilds themselves. themselves. These thickets are home to the strongest. So this one, channeling I, I'm very of the domain. thankful you allowed me to do there a lot of writing of for it as well. Kin, like the, kind the way we handled the script for this was you wrote out the information and in the building blocks the of what you wanted them to say, the and then I would transpose it into like more character based dialogue yeah foolish. i think you're, that you're much better with character stuff than i am search thank you no i i mean we work we work very well together in script writing no when it comes to stuff reason. like that those who enter Zorister of oh and there's the cur the first cursing for the episode yeah there it is <laughs> right there on screen Zorister was the first look at all them yep. chickens and there's a uh, Maxizol and a bunch of guardians. There's Dagon. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I will pause here. Uh, yeah. A lot of these guardians, uh, Gwendolyn summoned in Five YL. Then this is Maxizol from the Zanelli episode, and this is the Dagon. Yes. Um, yep. And that's Zorister back there. Along with it, Zorister with the urge, Caladrin, with a the whole crew. The I love the, the symbol background you did too. Power, I did them. I I, the I wanted to try to find an actual system of symbols, but I couldn't find anything fun. Same. So I, I always just, just Google symbols and just pick Adroit random ones from different matches. With great purpose, they lived united. Then you got Birth another god, Nadrista, god of the beast or guardian of the beasts. Zorister creating the uh, terra firma. Skills, they channeled this energy across worlds of many. The barren many. became filled with life. The sorrowful filled with joy. I can listen to Kellen speak like this, this all day. I want him to read me a storybook in, in this voice. Oh, there's a uh, uh, Max all again. Yeah, I forgot he showed up twice. Time passed. I had the idea of thing with Zanelli really, um, so I wanted him like visually seen a lot in this episode, gods. so that people Bring could get the connection. Would be yeah. There's the space Mormons from uh, the Big Tick. <laughs> space Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it just really got me. It's all good. That was really is this also Max's all again? I yeah, mean... that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Is I wanted I wanted people to like recognize him in this, so that whenever he shows up in Zanelli, they can be like, "Wait a second, isn't that that one thing from from Ledger thing. Domain?" Yep. Good Upon stuff, man. Them in return, Continuity. The guardians respected their desire. And that's a Methanosian. Methanosian, uh, well, technically proto methanosian because this is like a long, long way back in history. Um, then you've got uh, uh, Charmcaster's ancestor is the one in the middle, that one there. Yeah. Uh, hexes because they were Legend separate people. Uh, and then a Terra Firma, which is the Stone Guardian or the the Stone People that Zorister created. However, 
This angered those who the guardians refused this grace. I just realized too, this was my first instance of like fantasy not. writing in this series, mm -hmm. rather than sci-fi. Power through their own way, drawing directly from the lands, through machines. The machines. This artificial method was used to create this tools. fake ass shit, bro. The AI's taken over. Forged within. <laughs> To make them you can't make them wipe out Their magic. Yeah. Oh, I can't do magic. I'll just download a program that can do magic, right? It's the same thing. Path. Oh, dang. Them to attack the it's too real of a fear, man. Yeah. The one called Zorister herself, from which these forests were named. Their Damn, bro, what prompts did you do to for that spell? Attack it's crystal. Yep, here we go. The Crystal's cameo. Ending her reign. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time we've had her voice anything in, in the Five Whale multiverse is Zorister dying. Ending her reign with death. And we killed her. This enraged We're great this friends. Was, of the dude, this is one of my favorite drawings I've done for the for the episode. Zorister yeah, he looks awesome there. Dearly. And now with Space her ripping life, people yeah, apart by these tyrants. He rampaged through lands, the underground consumed by his form. This is the equivalent of uh, some guy, into you know, the domain, getting dumped by his girlfriend or something and then going on a, a drunken rampage what through the city. Of no, his girlfriend got killed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and keeping away the malicious mechanics. The that was a line you came up with. I love that. The what? The, the malicious mechanics. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Never resting, Never always resting. Writhing, writhing, maintaining the peace. The few remaining guardians abandoned their unity, with their it's peace so tarnished man. by these evil acts. They each sought their own paths. Some searched for revenge, others wanted to escape conflict. I stand here alone oh. in hopes of protecting what remains of my altruism. This is Kellengoff's best role. I will you fight anybody on it. To be making a... I don't care how many pandas he voices. What course are you plotting for? Well, um, Miss Tennyson wanted me to reestablish her route. Gwendolyn! Oh, by all means, map away. Her and her <laughs> it's so good. Like I love how jolly he gets when he hears about Gwen. Yeah. Is, <laughs> uh, oh, Helen's so good. The way to the kingdom of anywhere? Of course. The safest path would be along the drifting crosswalks. There you go. If you travel this way, you should be there in a few I did these little hours. graphics too, Just and I drew my skull on them. Of mystical sinkholes. Their desire for mana tempts the weak-minded into their trap. You must protect what little mana you have. Of course. So much. For the route and for the history. I'll be on my way. Best regards to Gwendolyn and that uh, grabby cousin of hers. <laughs> yeah. So that's to imply that uh, Ben stole Sornitho's DNA. He, uh, he wasn't given it. This was also a, another hint that Zaskare is locked within the Horus network. Oh, I did these. I forgot. I was like, am I in this episode? lot of easter eggs here we go over them in the breakdown so if you really want to know what's up go check that out my favorite was the hot sauce drop oh yes enjoy <laughs> as a cc here she's phenomenal Ow. this has to be my favorite if not caladrin this cc might be my favorite character for andy on so far mm. Oh, and the rebooting in the mouth Here. thing is such a good Come idea. On. Thank you. This isn't on my map. Well, 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 my mini meal ticket. You are in the full ring of Naboto! What's dope, too, is the, the growly undervoice is also Joy. Like, because we told her that she was supposed to be, like, scary and mystical, and she was like, oh, like this? You are in the fourth ring. I was like, yes. Yes, please. That. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She was, she's so good. Uh, the Prince of 
Like, nope, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know. Sorcerer cesspool, the underbelly she of the annoying. domain. Come on, dude. Being able to scare the piss out of people is half the fun of living in this dump. You're kind of ruining this for me. Oh, well, apologies. There's nothing in my records or Miss Tennyson's map mentioning a Navato. But I am recording a log for an educational survey if you'd like to inform me. You're lucky I'm bored, little man. But if it gives me something to do, I used to love putting on little shows. Now, Where's Crazy Frog? Prepare to be right here. dazzled. What? I don't know. Someone just said that in the chat. And I was like, I this got him. Here's Navato, the dark oh, I think even in the episode, I was like, oh. I we got a bunch of cities there. here, all floating around the sorcerer's engine. This is where the worst of the worst collect. I like the music that uh, like we used here too. My oh, it's very good. Hustling and bustling, is that the snail from Adventure Time? And selling. If you need to make yeah. dough, oh, that's uh, uh, from Amphibia, actually. Lots of tinkerers here too, all competing to make the quite a few big references in the shot. To use yeah. Mana. Although, Check out the breakdown, a folks. Lot of these ways are kind of rough. And by a Taurus. So Navato was created Please. to be a safe haven for paranormal progress. From curses to necromancy, this is your one-stop shop. They look so awesome. I hope you brought your wallet. It's also where a lot of freaks <laughs> call home. Those who are into all kinds of weird shit. <laughs> they gather here for the sorcerer's engine. You see, because of its power, dabbling in dark magic has a tendency of mangling the mana of the caster. Everyone thinks they're tough. Until the dark magic catches up with them. Yeah, Joy's they really good in this smart, role. The magic burns right through them. And if they survive that, they end up looking like the bottom of my ashtray. <laughs> I love the gross so, The engine and other <laughs> tools were created to absorb mana to take the strain away from them. Amateurs. Some tools can do other things too, but those extra things usually stuff. need There's special the blips Librium. and such branded onto them. From, uh, Casters that already three. screwed up their I love this shot. To refresh Her themselves. levitating the stuff. Although, they have to be careful. How old is CC? Booshing off the Ampus uh, um, can make like them a, depend on it, leaving their constitution super weak. She's a Grisa nymph, so she doesn't age the them. same as humans. They're she lasts a lot longer. The stuff without any hope of healing. Their future children oh, I, I remember I did all the, the lip flaps and, and facial expressions more. for her. So this was another um, collaborative effort in the art. Her and Charmcaster. So dark sorcerers are a technology also, the, I love doing this uh, indirect explanation for uh, Michael Morning. Yeah. Story. No, it's more like an occupation. We got freaks from all over the universe here. As long as they got the brains to learn magic but not the smarts to make better life choices. They're pretty much one of us. My species is a Griezenim. My buddy Trek is part panthophage. Hell, we got a Yeti running the place, and before him was just a big turtle guy. Oh, you're referring to the Geoshalon Aerial known as Adwecha, correct? Big shell and flaming head? Yep, that guy was a total douche. Such a good that one day he her. just showed up out of nowhere, preaching how he wanted to be a sorcerer and was enlightening himself hey, to all the you energy people. of the universe. Hey, the blah blah blah, so crazy old turtle crap. He was weighing over his head too. He barely knew how to harness. I love all mana, the spells he came up with here too. Spell, so he only cast magic using items. Dude was soup without him. The Eventually, slick he left Navato slink. because he <laughs> a lot of debt from the items he bought and stole. <laughs> Everyone hated him. Couple years later, the dude somehow got his hands on an alpha rune and took over the whole damn domain. It was crazy. He was shouting, All matter belongs to me. You are all thieves. This People is a shot you had to add in. Yeah, I love it so much. Or enslaved, but eventually, because it was originally just that last shot for this whole and no sequence, I was like, Since the king It's a bit long. Throne. Can you do one more for Since me, buddy? His capture five years ago, his whereabouts have been unknown, but with this new information, we should be more prepared if he ever resurfaces with ill intent. If he ever oh, does, this, um, oh no, curse crafter, but call me CC. Oh, yeah, huh? oh. I forgot. Well, hello there, Mr. You, you for <laughs> yeah, I forgot about it. <laughs> okay, he said that in the original one too. Her name is Curse Crafter because of the line before, 
we're cur- we're uh, uh, I already forgot what the line is. It's a curse that crowds them for their birth. No, I was going to say, I forgot yes. that Dark Star was in this. Oh. This is you. What do you mean I you know. forgot? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was just one of the times where I voiced a character because it's cheaper. Um, it yeah. worked really well. Thank I think you. you sound great as him. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, man. Thanks. I'm glad I was able to do the job. <sighs> Hello, CC. Hello, CC. Are you interested in a custom job? Stop trying to sell me stuff. How about a new helmet? The one you're wearing looks like a tight fit. Unless you like things that Boris way. is like, I um... It's like, should I be here for this? <laughs> yeah. I know these yeah, videos aren't for kids, course, but like... Honey, <laughs> sorry, but he's not for sale. He's probably worth more than you. Oh. Doing yeah, that is Michael Morningstar. No, uh... <laughs> It's not directly said until the very end. We like doing stuff like that, where it's like, if you notice, you get it. If not, it's not a big deal, because we didn't want mm -hmm. to, to say it right off the bat that the whole time you're thinking about Michael Morningstar instead of listening to the lore. Yeah. Living forests, mystic sinkholes, being treated like a bargaining chip. I am simply trying to map a course to... The kingdom of anywhere? Yes, how did you... My king had notified me you were coming. When you didn't show up, I was sent to guide you. Yay. Here we go. Are you ready for Disney World? Nobody's here! <laughs> Let's go, kid. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is the kingdom of anywhere. Built oh. at the center of Ledger Domain by our king after so that's one of the, 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 the things that Charmcaster would use as like a guard uh, dog. Rick, 6, 000, Palafang or something? Yeah, Palafang. In a few generations. Uh, and then a blue that, tetra man, hell yeah. That, that's from Dumb Doodles. He wants to be a magician, that's why he's there working for that lady. Oh, and then, is that the, the emo oh. pesky dust? Yeah. yeah. I love that guy too. It was Pyrotech, I love it. Oh. Uh, such as the charms of Brazil, like you have here. What I have is <laughs> just slapping his yeah. shoulders. We're buddies now, right, <laughs> Mikey? Can I call you Mikey? <laughs> no. Like a magical battle. <laughs> they don't even call they me that can here. Be used for anything. Charms, however, each have a special glyph designed to focus. So he can make holograms, magic. magical holograms. That's about you the extent need to of know his the power. True name of things mm. to bend them. Well, that he's allowed will, to use. But right. yeah. many. They use these charms So those runes on him, like, imprison him. Because, you know, Which Michael's a freaking psychopath. Even the, the episode, it's the alternate timeline when, uh, when Kevin is under Charmcaster's control, it's the same symbol on his chest. Yep. So it is like an imprisonment thing, the where they are still conscious or not. ...to spread the use of magic across this realm and others. I really wish I was better there with the walking animations. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> all with varying I feel like Ambion's done in a style where it's like, not it's kind of stone, aesthetic. Yeah, like it's expected, it's not going to be full on frame by frame animation. Like even way back to, to episode one with the with the Vaxasaurians sliding across the ground, I actually yeah. think that looks better than if we tried to make them walk. I don't know how to explain it, it just, it, it works in the no, visual I, I style that. That, that, that I interpreted as, yeah. Greg! The other GREG! By Lieutenant Hobble Gravel on Ener oh. so isn't there only supposed to be one Alpha Rune? At any given time, yes. Mikey Starkin. Alpha Runes can only be created by an old one. It cannot be created unless the previous one was destroyed. They that's that's us trying to cover Ultimate Alien's ass. And the no, not Ultimate Alien, power, Omniverse. The Wait, no. How many times did the Ultimate with the it is yeah, Alpha Rune? Yeah, when the Omni when the Alpha Rune came back. Every time it showed up, it's kind of like, well, what happened to it last time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so they can be destroyed from over. Yeah. Like, like how Charmcasters in Omniverse was destroyed oh, here by we that go. fish. Hold on, it's 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 Sam Slade here as a charm caster. She's also I'm really wrong. good. We have such a talented cast in this My episode. Mm -hmm. I've returned with the droid sent here by Gwendolyn Tennyson. He appears to have lost his way. Thank you, Michael. That'll be all. That's the that's the reveal. Yeah, where she calls him Michael. Yeah, and then you look at him and you're like, wait, that mask. Um, yeah, honestly, out of uh, out of all the characters we cast for Ambion, 
I uh or five way L. I feel like Sam Slade as Charmcaster is one of the closest matches we've ever had. Um, like I I like when actors can bring a little bit of their own personality to the role. Um, but Sam Slade sounds almost like indistinguishable from Kari Walgren as Charmcaster. So she she does a great job, and she's a great actress as well. As you wish. So, you're the little drone that's supposed to make the map for Gwendolyn, right? That, that's correct. I am the R300. Oh, I'm I would like to specify as well, Charmcaster, because the time uh, dilation between the dimensions Morris. is older but here. You've been doing yep. more than uh, in the that premiere, when everyone was saying Mommy Char Charmcaster, it's not that weird, because she is like 30-something. Well, apologies if I've been I mean, we don't even really know how old she was in the first be. series. This is the perfect They say she's 25, and she... they never say I'm anything sure about it. Ah, well, they mind. just ignore it. I haven't had the best reputation back on Earth, but things are different now that I've become king. Um, shouldn't that be Queen of Ledger Doning? <sighs> There's a reason your realm is so far behind. I love how she doesn't even give him Let an answer either. It's so like, if you really care, like, that's not the point. It doesn't matter. Long ago, yep. my father There's led Spellbinder the there. Ledger domain with and her mom. Her <laughs> he was kind, inspiring, and the bravest of us all. The bell finder. But our kingdom was small, and his people began to struggle. He oh, ventured like through the deadly forest of Zorister. Not in search for hidden power, but for its guardian, pleading to the old one for the power to keep his people it's safe. Caladrin. His Cali. compassionate spirit inspired the old one to bestow upon him, him the Alpha Rune. Father returned to our kingdom with joy, giving our people a happy and healthy society. Years passed, and I was born and knew nothing but of the great life he gave Charmcasters, us. Charmcasters, the young one being Edwin based off reboot. Yep. I like really I like the design. My father went to visit his brother. Oh, Hex. Yeah, Hex looks when awesome. When he found a sorcerer, he looks like a great help, hybrid of all of the his forms of too. Too. He was you see a little bit I imagine he used to be like a, a chill father dude. Was reminded yeah. His From what happened, he's during the bitter times and, before the yeah. Alpha Rune, and took him in. He cared for him, using healing spirits and potions to nurse him back to health. But one night. The Alpha Rune was stolen by Adwaitia while Never spellbinder trust the turtles. Slips, using it to drain my father's mana to the brink of slurp, death. Slurp, slurp. Yep. Adwaitia returned to our kingdom in my father's place and took control. Oh, now you, now that you've no seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine, you know why I say slurp, slurp. slurp. That's why yeah. I keep saying it now, too. <laughs> Adwaitia learned it's of this and put a slurp, slurp. on our dimension. You never said that. No one could enter or exit without his approval. My father and Uncle Hex rallied our remaining people, encouraging us to stick together. What's her mom's name? The protectors of Becky. Oh. rebellion. Spellbinder oh. would not submit. <laughs> I don't think I ever gave her a My name. My father expended Becky. all of his mana, creating a gate so powerful it broke through Adwaitia's curse. He sacrificed his life to save us. I escaped with my uncle to Earth to one day return so sad. and Always gotta have that bit of sad. That crying is from now Epidemic Sound, Ledger too. Domain's leader, oh, bringing yeah, a new era to my people. A life my father once led. Excellent job. I'm Bravo, sure Sam. father would be very proud. Thank you. Anyways, about that map you're making for Gwendolyn. This charm helps with spatial awareness. Wherever you travel in Ledger Domain, your map will... Shit. Your map will magically update itself. All you have to do it's is a GPS. on the right path. Yes. <laughs> Think. Well, thank you, <laughs> you just, just make sure you're using the correct name when you return to the door. Now, I have other matters to attend to. You should be on your way, unless you want to be turned into a totem. Not on my way! <laughs> well, that was a lot. Both information and intimidation. Anyway, and the filter Ledger Domain. Magically... Yeah, this is because there's two audio tracks of Horus layered on top of each other. That was just a pure accident. I forgot to, to mute the one that I didn't need anymore, so he's extra loud. Mysterious and menacing place to live, but thankfully we were just visiting. Make sure you plunge back into the void sometime and join me on another extra-dimensional exploration. This is... You know, since we're in 
premiere like i have the impulse to like try to fix it right now but that's that's not gonna matter nah. like it's not gonna fix the version on youtube <laughs> look if anything we'll just say it's it's the scare is starting to like talk up through his voice too this doesn't seem correct because he does um that episode actually premiered yeah it, it, it this aired like i think less than a week before so i i was very happy we slid that in there um, cause it, like people who probably just watched the episode would watch this and be like, "Wow!" Wait a minute, what? Rick and Morty. That was the only one like we had planned. Everything else, I was just feeling stuff, and I was just like, "One of them has to be Squidward falling through." Like, <laughs> yes, yeah. Hazarath, Metreon, Synthos, Elemental, and Fulu Belaya. Hello? Why is this not working? <laughs> you, you know what? You can. Can. In my hello, you can kind of hear that the audio track is doubled too. Hello? That's why it sounds like it's, I'm speaking through a cup. Hello? Yeah. I so. like the idea that the portal is coming hello? through your computer screen. Yeah, like as, I, as I'm working on this. Mm. Hello? Why is this not working? None of these tacky on readouts match my original universe. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can tell the voice I is slightly different from yeah. the last time. The performance and the filter. Except I I drew all the characters here, but I tried to draw them in the ambient style, so it looks like you, you did it. Excuse me. They do look really good, so thank you. What's oh, gonna no. happen next? Magic. You can buy this stuff though. This stuff is still in our Why? store, probably. A hundred percent. I have yeah. the shirt. It's a very comfy shirt. You should buy it. I had a ledger domain poster hanging up right over there. Oh, join Patreon. See all the storyboards and everything. Yeah, and also if you <laughs> want to help the the future of these episodes, you can buy a Taurus plushie. Uh, if we Please. make 500 sales, yeah, we'll be able to afford to make more and beyond. We can make more uh, motion comic episodes, uh, even the breakdowns and the drawing matrixes. Everything, everything costs money to make. Even if you think it doesn't, it does. Trust me, it really does. Um, and a great way to acquire those funds is selling these uh, 500 uh, keychains. You can also, for the next, what is it? You have three hours left to enter the 5YL cameo contest. Um, but the keychains will still be selling for another nine days. So even if you miss out on the contest, you can still grab a keychain, have yourself a little Taurus buddy. We're at 79% uh, funding now. We are at 396. Um, but right now we're at the halfway point of the stream. Kind of flew by. I'm having a good time. How about you, buddy? very very fun so far like yeah. i j it's so cool being able to go back through and just it like i said with these episodes it was more production time more work went into them and it just it feels so rewarding to be able to actually celebrate that kind of right that yeah sense. no i get you i i completely agree but on that note we are at the 15 minute uh break mark uh, yeah. Last time I didn't take all 15 minutes. This time I might, um, but we'll see. I gotta. I'm gonna put up a countdown graphic so you'll know exactly when we return. Um, but uh, until then, once once we come back, we're gonna do a quick Q and A section before watching the final two episodes, and then we're gonna spend an hour where I'm going to do some dumb doodles for you guys during the final hour of the cameo campaign while good old OR Ash here compiles everybody's emails. And then we will randomly select six winners to be in 5YL. But until then, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and we'll see you guys soon.
Psych, folks, we're back one minute early. How's it going? Hello, everybody. We did it, folks. We're back. We're here. We took a nice little break. Did what we needed to do. Rejuvenated our human body parts with the appropriate cell uh, diagnostics. But uh, we're going to start things off with a little bit of Q&A. Um, in a little bit, we're going to be jumping back into the episode reviews. But now that we've gone through... Uh, we did Ledger Domain, we did Big Chill, and we did a Nur. So let's have a little bit of a Q&A discussion just to break things up before we dive into Aeropella. Is the Yeti running Navato Dr. Animo's Yeti from Ultimate Alien? Well... I don't know if I can answer this question, actually. Yeah. It, Just don't answer do it. That's, that's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it then. How old are Ben's kids? Let's see. Um, technically, six. they're only like six or seven. Yeah. But, yeah, they're like six. Mm -hmm. They uh, they they age, like, physically quicker. Because yeah. Aliens. All aliens do. We're the slow ones. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the hardest alien to redraw for five years later? Oh man, they all have varying levels of difficulty. Sometimes it's the technique, sometimes it's coming up with the concept. It's a tricky subject. I don't know, and usually once I, like when I'm doing it, I'm like, this is the hardest thing ever. And then I finish and it's like, oh, alright. So, I don't know, does Big Ben count? Does I'd that say be yes. a Ben alien? Yeah, him. <laughs> Either that or Planet Buster. One of the big ones that take like two whole pages just to show. Those. Those are a nightmare. Uh, this sounds like a question for you, Mr. Ash. Uh, is Topic being connected to Eye Guy? A reference how in the episode Topic debuts in Ben was Eye Guy at first, then became Topic when bumping the Omnitrix? Yes, that's the exact reason <laughs> that, that they are connected. Because, <laughs> uh, like I, I just I find it funny oh you just bumped it it bumped it over one spot and the closest species to it genetically right. was Topic so I thought it worked yeah that that little scene spawned a whole uh, lore extension that's how they all happen has Owen was... trained with Verdona yet I'd, I'd imagine they've definitely gotten together maybe grandma showed her a couple of things but I wouldn't say like they sat down and like planned a whole co training course you know, but she's definitely shown up again sometime within the past five years. And was like, hey, check out how to do this. <laughs> and then they blew it up. If the glass part of a Sandvox's suit breaks, what happens to them? Do they die? I feel like that might be a you question. You may you may disc jockey originally. Um, I would say it's the equivalent as like getting stabbed in the lung. Like you're, oh. it's almost guaranteed you're gonna die. But there's a chance if you know what you're doing and take the exact right precautions, immediately you can save it. But it's not like a guaranteed like poof he's gone. Why specifically the lung in that? It was, it was just the first thing I thought of, to be honest. Like something that's like vital, but. Like, getting shot in the brain, that's done. You're dead. But, like, if you get stabbed, like, in the lung, there's a chance you can make it, but it's it's very minuscule. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, what was the version of the... Oh, oh, shit. These are piling up. Oh, man. Yeah, I was going to say, Q&A went quick. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I have to pop out the chat to, like, read, read more of it. It's such a small window in YouTube. Uh, is the is, is Ithibis species? Oh, is Caladrin the only Ithibis one left? Uh, no, there are other Ithibis. Um, they were created from like Caladrin's image, but they are a species that does still live in Zorus. Will we? Oh, will we ever do the Mister Smoothie video? So here we're <laughs> so down for it, and to, it does come up every now and then. We're always just like, oh, and then maybe we could do the smoothie video. It's just, it's a hard thing to plan, like, he literally lives on the other side of the country, 
and then we have to like go out and buy all these ingredients too. I can imagine we that's an easy crickets. like three hundred dollar bill or something. We have to get crickets, sardine, lamb, like yeah. Oh. Maybe if we sell five hundred Tauruses, we'll guarantee we'll do the video next year. Three hundred ninety nine. I mean, yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty fair. We sell at least 500 Taurus keychains. We'll for sure do the smoothie video. Even if we have to like do it over the call or something. And like we all just both have the exact same ingredients and have to make it ourselves. Like what we did with the chili fries. Oh, it would be much better to do it in person. Like I would love to do it side by side with you. But like if we're locked in, like we have to do this video, but you can't come up here, then. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I kind of, I really want to do it in person though. Just because yeah. I imagine. The process of making the smoothies would be so fun. Right? Yeah. That's that's honestly the the reason we've been putting it off is just because it's such yeah. a rare time we're in the same like state as each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, is Hobble the true villain of Five YL? Life is the true villain of Hobble. Life deals him <laughs> a bad hand. Wow, that feels real. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh dang. Favorite color. Uh, turquoise. If Ooh, I had to pick purple. just a solid one. <gasps> the the outlines on our heads in the thumbnail is our favorite <laughs> <Yeah>. colors. <laughs> We're very open with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, what's the model name of a Taurus? Well, Tauruses are always just like equipment to a Horus. So I guess like whatever that Horus's model number is dash T or something. Yeah. Unless you're unless you weren't at the stream yesterday and are asking like what does Taurus stand for? Yeah. Which is a uh, tiny observational uh record squid. Recording assistant squid? Yeah. Okay, you did cut out there. You've been doing it a lot less. That's because I keep talking really loudly and make sure is pointed directly at my mic when I'm talking. You gotta just eat the fucking mic, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Are Addy and Zeke a romantic couple? <gasps> oh, that's none of our business. Yeah, it's, that's them, man. Why did you hate the idea of a lightning lizard? Uh, we. Oh I mean, God. it's not that. It's not that we hate it. Like we dislike it. It's just like the idea that Arctic iguana is an ice lizard. And it said there's other types of lizards. Your first thought would probably be straight elements. There's a fire lizard. There's an air lizard. There's an earth lizard, and probably a lightning lizard. Um, and Ash had this genius idea to do it more environmentally based. Like there's different. Like the lizards are separated because of their biomes, not elements. And mm -hmm. making fun of the electric lizards was just our way of like playfully like talking about the concept. But I mean, it's not like we actually hate lightning lizards. Yeah, I'd, honestly, I've I've been seeing some people do fan concepts for Lightning Manzardil since yeah. the episode came out. They are really dope. I, I I don't object to it. It's just what Rob said, but also Ben has enough Lightning aliens. Very true. I didn't yeah, want, I didn't want people to be like another one. Mm -hmm. I'm like what? Another electric one. Another for the plug roster. It in, plug it in. He either has lightning powers, shoots lasers, or can fly. Plus, trying to come up with a biome for an electric one, the same influence-wise as the other ones, I, I honestly don't know what I would have done. He's in the sky, and he walks on the rain clouds. I actually do kind of like that. Yeah? I was just <laughs> yeah. I was just making that up, but all right, yeah. No, it's, it, that seems cool. Okay. People, did, people were like, why didn't you do an air one? I'm like, there is an air one. It's the Talus one. <laughs> they launch themselves into the air. Yeah. And grab birds and then crash down in the ground. <laughs> That's true. Yep, they're the air ones. <laughs> the true air benders. Are Max and Verdona married or still in love? They're definitely still in love. I don't even think they got married. I don't imagine they would have. Yeah. I don't think Max is married. Um, no. Just because of, like... When would that have even happened? Like, that's a very hard thing to plan, especially when your wife is out in space being an ultra-powerful energy being. Um, yeah. I like to think that's why he wears floral shirts, though, is because of the flowers that Verdona would... Oh! I like that! I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. 
But no, they're definitely still to like in love and together. <clears throat> she she comes up. Who's the Xylene? I've heard. Um. Uh. Oh. <laughs> we could just say they have like some type of agreement or something. I don't know. <laughs> I can see them being an open thing. Yeah. They're very free spirited. They are. Would Hope and Cooper be a great couple? I I feel like they probably don't even know who each other are. Like I forget who Hope is in Charm entirely. Caster. Oh. Yeah, it's like Yeah, no. I don't I don't, so. I don't see them interacting. Like How would that even work? I don't know. That you you'd have to you'd have to build a very solid story for something like that to work. So like maybe you can maybe you can make it work and I would agree, but right now it just seems a bit shipping for shipping yeah, sake. Yeah, it's 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 very random. Eunice and Cooper, part of me could kind of see that. Oh man, she's, Some, someone she's says Sonny and Cooper, he finally gets his Gwen. <laughs> oh, That's psychotic. No. <laughs> That's evil, I would not want that. To, I could see that as a plot for an episode. They're alone together but... and Cooper's just like, can you make your hair orange? <laughs> <laughs> no, Cooper, not this time. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I worked out for you, I'm buff now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sad. No, I don't. I don't. I don't want Cooper to to be sad. You killed him in the comic. What do you mean you don't want him to be sad? He died like a badass, though. Yes, but he's not alive, so I think that counts as being sad. Okay, fine. I guess out of the two scenarios. And sure. before that, you like had him electrified in the eyes. All right, man. <laughs> I actually like Cooper. I just want to be clear, but yeah, when you put it that way, do you? Really? I did not treat him well. Oh, the same way I love Horace and blow him up at the end of every episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, yeah, Horace is great. Let's kill him. <laughs> Alright, awesome. Do it again. Please, no more. But we have 500... Now make him have a kid and kill that kid. Oh, <laughs> and make him not care. Yeah. My emotion's been removed right now, apparently. Does Ben have the other Manzardil transformations? Yeah, he has all of them. Yes. You'll probably see him pretty soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't you worry. Don't you worry. The lizard tricks is real. <laughs> Instead of an hourglass, it's like that old uh, uh, Sobe energy lizard pearl mm -hmm. or whatever. <laughs> Does Edwaja have descendants in 5YL? I, I wouldn't um... say so. I don't know. You think anyone would have wanted to go near that? No, he's turtle? kind of an asshole, man. Yeah, nah. No. Who are we shipping with Adwaja then? <laughs> that's the. That's why they asked. Come on. Himself. <laughs> you know what? I could yeah. see that. The only one good enough for me, and he clones himself, is me. Shut the. Shell. Even the clone is just like you need to stop. Being so sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Master Ubwe. Can all the Guardians be scanned by the Omnitrix, or is Caladrin the only old one with DNA? No, they are all capable of it. It's just that Ben has to, like, be within the vicinity of them to actually yeah. And Caladrin is the only one he's able to. <clears throat> yeah, ben, ben hasn't met any of the other Guardians. And for the people... Yeah. I was gonna say, for the people that want to mags his all transformation... He got eaten before Ben yeah, could meet him. He's gone. So sorry. Whoops. <laughs> nom nom. Will I do it on? Yeah, I I think I answered this yesterday, but I'm definitely gonna do an omniverse breakdown with you, uh, Ash. Mhm. Mm yeah, we'll find a good one. There's gonna, there's gonna be multiple. I love Omni. Yeah. <laughs> Next is all got slurped. No. Slurped. Slurped. Actually, what's up for season two? No, I don't want to do this right now. We'll figure yeah. it out. Um, oh, wow, yeah. These these go by fast. When will we find out at Wage's true goal? I mean, he likes mana. Yeah. yeah. His goal I, is pretty yeah. clear. It's, it's kind of more scare who's like the the planner there. At Wage just wants, wants the freaking mana. He's like, Gim Gim. 
All mana belongs to me. Yeah, that's all he cares about. He's just a big freaking dick. Dude, I remember when when I had that as like lines. <laughs> you you saw the script and you're like, you actually have him say it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he said it in the show. Did he not? <laughs> I forgot if he said it in the show. It's just funny. Will we get more plushies after Taurus? There's potential. Um, we have a good relationship with Makeship. Um, they seem very, very easy to work with. And, uh, you know, if these sell well and meet their goal, uh, I don't see why they wouldn't want to work with us a third time. Right now we're yeah. at 399. We only need to sell one more in order to cap 400, which is great. And then it's just, we need to sell 100 over the next nine days. But we're there. We're getting there. If this was plushies, we would have sold them twice over now. Because the plushies, we only had to sell 200. Think of it like this. Buy a Taurus, buy extra Taurus, so you can make our relationship with Makeship better, and we can make more plushies in the future. Yeah. You want a Zascare Horus? You want a, a Forest plushie? Mecha Horus? I, he's already Mecha. What are you talking about? He's already a robot. <laughs> All right, well, it's 3.30, so how about okay. we dive into Aeropella? Am I still sharing my uh, thing with you? Yes, you are. Okay, wonderful. So let's pop on over here. So this was a, a nice return to form. We had a great selection of uh, very meaty, very intricate, very long episodes. <clears throat> so Aeropella was kind of like, let's go back to our roots. Let's take the skills that we've learned making those other episodes and see if we can apply it in a simpler format. Um, and this didn't take too long to make, right? It took, like, a month, maybe less? It was a month... Wait, one second. The script took me about two weeks, and then the entire art production took about a month. Um, so, like, a month and a half from start to finish, yeah. uh, roughly. Plus the editing. Um, yeah, so two, about two months. That's not bad. For an episode like this quality, especially on top of... Because at the time I was still doing weekly breakdowns, you were still you had another drawing matrix like in the in the pipeline, yeah. And then of course you know all the other stuff that just happens. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, two months for an episode of this quality for a quick and beyond that's not bad. I you will know, say, we, yeah, this episode I think is like the the example the the best example of the base and beyond formula, like. All the, all the episodes we did yesterday were kind of like, those are base episodes, they're not too long, not too complicated, um, and don't have a lot of, like, extremely uh, uh, difficult-to-do animations and stuff. This one, I feel like, is the more refined of those four episodes, like, stylistic-wise of our production. Right. Um... Yeah, and you know, doing something like this in two months, maybe maybe we could have some frequent releases next year. That sounds like a that sounds like a possibility there. A possibility. Um, but yeah, let's freaking dive right in. Arapella, Jet A World, Manta Ray, Boop Bop Bop yes. Boop, Pow. Splash splash in the bath. It's frozen. It is. God, I love you, Adobe. Don't ever change. Stay exactly like this. For 15 years. Good evening, extranet and multidimensional travelers. Welcome back to and beyond, where we plunge into the void and explore ever expanding multiverse. I am your host, the R300 Orion IT Systems Model V55, but you can call me 55. Horse. Today we'll be exploring the prized planet of Aeropella. Please keep all appendages inside the portal at all times, and remember, I am not equipped with life preservers, so please try not to drown. Don't die. He doesn't care. Oh, this is. I made his pupils disappear when he does the portal thing. I do like that. Because then he looks more like a logo, kind of. I love the shape of this, too. Thank you. Really great shape. This waterlogged planet is a physical During the live, everyone's like, is it a binky? It's a gravitational balance between its two separated cores and a surface-connected planetary ring. With very few notable land masses, oceans make up about 96% of the planet's surface. The planet's atmosphere is extremely dense and often fluctuates in pressure. This results in regularly occurring extreme weather conditions such as hurricanes or monsoons. Because of these raging aerial conditions, the airborne 
species came to the planet holding mastery of flight very early into their adolescence. With hundreds of species high above and far below the water's surface, today we'll be starting with the dominant inhabitants of Aeropella, the Aerophibians. Yeah. Jet ray planet. Clouds. I love that transition. Because it was like you went down, then you soar across them, and then down again. Yeah, it's like we're going through the, the ripples. Also, we got some nice puppeteering work here by the moon. Yes. Stand anywhere from two to nine feet tall with a wingspan double their height. Their sleek skin, aerodynamic shape, and amphibious lungs make life on Aeropella a breeze. Okay. Aerophibians can be found living high up in the sky on terrain peaks. Deep in the oceans of More underwater the shots, so this is a great underwater shot. And even shot. along the atmospheric edge of the planet, only needing to dip down for a breath every few days. The Aerophibian people are thrill seekers and spend a majority of their time bolting around at grand speeds. Yeah, See, it's it's very much a return to form, but you can tell like we've learned a lot from making the heavier episodes. Uh with like the, the skills and um the intricacies. But I, I like these these spires you have going on with all the flags. Thank you. Yeah, it's really I, good stuff. I thought it'd be cool if it was uh if it's a mostly o oceanic planet, there's not a lot of actual land. Yep. Making a sick rush, as they say. It's quite sick. common to see groups racing each other for competition, and dozens of flags flying around their homes. E now, one thing I wish I did, if I had time, was make some stone, like, singular spires with, like, a couple flags and have them flying by him as he goes. Oh, that would have been really yeah. cool. Each representing a victory amongst their peers. It seems the only height they have trouble reaching is that of a dopamine high. Many others have channeled this lust for rush into profit, seeking employment at Aero to go. Tired of shopping oh. to find the planetary bounds? This video is sponsored by. Missing the taste of some homegrown fruit? Trying to get that new merch drop but live on a Tech 2 or lower planet? Call the universe's number one highest rated delivery service. I love all the little quotes that you did yeah. too. Yeah, they're so good. They're really good. We, we can take a, a gander at them. Uh, the Lewodin president. The, which is the marshmallow people. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, they're never late when you need them the most. Volcanus, because he's always ordering parts from his suit exploding. Uh, they gave me a discount if I rated them five stars. President of Undertown, <laughs> which is Arjun. Argent. Yeah. Food is always fresh upon arrival. Queen Voratio Rumpletum, uh, the Gormand Queen. Love and then they're almost as fast as us, the Kinesellerin Monastery. <laughs> So yeah, they all love Arrow to go. Sending packages across the stars in a matter of hours. Aerophibian speed with Tekadon security. Pick up and drop off anywhere in the known Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies. If you've got Tayden, there'll be no delay. There'll with Arrow be go. no delay. Responsible for packages being lost in instances. And then there's love this little shot. Like holes are destroyed by incursions for interplanetary exchange. And a, a roasted Mogwai. Yeah. Apologies. I forgot to enable spam blocking, but as I was saying, <laughs> Arrow to Go was founded by a poltroon the first time named Sosip Bej. First arriving on Aeropella when his ship was attacked in its planetary range, there you can see the, uh, yeah, the Wyshin in the back. Impressed by their flight speed capabilities, he got the idea for a delivery company. Water. Spending their days not only hustling and bustling to work, I think the, these guys are my favorite. Amount of time lily paddlers, is that what they're called? Despite mm -hmm. being yes. the literal yeah, base of great. operations Those of are my the biggest ones. conglomerate in the universe, mm -hmm. Aerophobian society lacks an economy as well as an established currency. Basically, if you want to eat on Aeropella, you have to catch your food first. Brinewing, lily paddlers, hover blubbers, and even whirlpool uh, warblers are all on a dietary target practice. Now, the Aerophibian's main method like, of hunting so is their yes, the brine wing and lily The spine of the Aerophibian is hollow and full of a neon helium gas compound. Internally, oh, oh yeah, this whole this whole back part right here. Mm -hmm. Um, excellent work. I love you do a, a ton of X rays in Zanelli. Uh, and we've been starting to see them creep into and beyond more and more, but this one especially, I really like. Thank you. I it turned out so much cooler than I was expecting. Now, is this based on any actual manta ray uh, anatomy that you've seen? Oh yeah. So I, I always try to if I do an anatomical shots to make them as close to like the real life equivalent as possible. I was looking up actual manta ray uh, skeletons and stuff because they do have like flexible fibrous skeletons yep. um so it does still make sense that they have like these 
quote unquote bones in their wings, even though they're wings. Um, but yeah, aside from like the spinal column down the center, it is like almost a one for one for an actual manta ray. What about the the um, the skull up here? Oh, well, I guess you only really see the back of it because I was just thinking about how Jet Ray's face when you see him morph in Alien Force, you kind of see like the human skull turn into like the parts of the the mouth and the antenna or whatever coming off. Would you say it's still is still the same way here, or like would you say those are more like flesh like? Um, I would say it's it's probably the same. It would be the the base of the the lips and the horns are probably branched off of the skeleton, and then like ram and elk horns where they just kind of like continue to grow, but uh, aren't as strong towards the ends, which is why they can move around. Okay, like almost like cartilage then. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Good stuff, man. Science. Science gases via synaptic currents in their brainstem and then funnel them out of their eyes or there tail, is. creating an electrically stunning laser that will yeah, paralyze hey. prey. This Neuroshock laser also oh. to navigate all Also, planets. the neon helium gas. Neon, when it is burned in its natural state, is green. Uh, same thing with helium, but also there's a lot of shots in it where he's just kind of hovering, with not moving his wings. Yep. His, his bones are literally full of helium. <laughs> which is why that works i like that explanation um thank you because yeah i like <laughs> i like that jet ray you know needs to make an effort to fly like mm -hmm. uh any type of bird or anything on earth they can't just hover there um so whenever he does hover there i'm like eh, it doesn't look that great <laughs> same with big chill whenever he's not well i don't know cloaked big chill flying around looks kind of cool but i don't know something about jet ray just hovering there doesn't look great but the helium yeah. and the bones that's a nice explanation Given enough charge up, the Neuroshock can also function as a laser and also function as a destructive laser and be used to clear debris that may float in an amphibian's path. But space rocks aren't the only yeah. thing they need to worry about when venturing yeah. through the planetary ring, because Coming this through. ring is the home of the amphibian's natural predator, the Leviathans. I love how he's coming on in. <laughs> they have four arms, right? Yeah. Technically five, their tail is also a hand. Okay. Here we are, the, the ring. Vapor Welcome coastline. to Aeropella's planetary ring, locally known as the Vapor Coastline. The vapor this coastline. planetary ring was I love coming up with the names for these areas. Ago when a nebula collided with the planet. The heat from the nebula melted the long since gone planetary ice caps, and as a result, overflowed Aeropella into its current modern day state. I like when During you do this the, collision, the, plant, the planet's the planet mass was somehow evenly too. split to and reformed it. into two balanced cores. These cores keep not only the planet's gravity in check, but also collected the remaining collision debris into what is now known as the Vapor Coastline. As a result of the two cores constantly pushing and pulling the waves of vapor and debris, locals call it Oh yeah, it this, this was just another me being like, there's too much of the same thing on screen, time for some something new to happen. Here's a picture of the planet. Coastline, because it acts as such. Living in the Vapor Coastline, we find the unique space-thriving species known as Leviathans. Love them. Leviathans are large There's... cetacean like creatures ranging. I love them so much. They're like decked out in, in trash, space trash. Mm -hmm. Packing so, tape and stickers know, and stuff. They're pirates out to find the space one piece. <laughs> Sometimes, if you listen closely, you can hear them go, yo, 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 yo. In size between 20 <laughs> and 30 feet long. That's their whale song. Yeah. These unique creatures are capable of living in the vacuum of space thanks to a secondary breathing organ in their head called a vapor lock. Because there is no breathable air in space, they will smash meteors and frozen ice into smaller Thank you. chunks. This of is their based off of nothing. I just made it all up. And breathe in the thick space dust and vapor. Wonderful. The vapor lock then filters out the ice and water, evaporating it. So the body can absorb the ice. What is going on? Can absorb the oxygen within the water molecules. They can then expel and manipulate the discarded dust debris out of exhaust blowholes on their torso and jowls. They use this vapor manipulation jowls. to glide along the coastline. Here's one of the rare times where I didn't use a colored background for space because I felt like it was too distracting. Um, so it's just pure black. a surfer to a wave, as well as a method like to ensnare Plus, prey. this talks about Using how they the kind of like sneak up with their their mysterious. Sonar, so they can disorient prey from a distance and go oh, in for the kill really? with great accuracy. It is said. Now, would you say the the Leviathans? You might have answered this before. Are the predator of jet rays, as in like oh, the Matrix accessible? Because we do uh, 
we do have um, Ben transforming into one, but also I guess some predators are just more intelligent than than we give them credit for, right? Yeah, because the way I would say it, the Nematrix itself was designed for less coherent mind in yeah. general because animalistic. Think of it like this. If Kyber was a transformation, would he be Ben accessible or would he be a Nematrix thing? He hunts everything. Right. So I, I would say, yes, it is the, the Aerophibian Predator, but they are a fully intelligent people. So it would be Omnitrix, not Nematrix. Wonderful. There you go, folks. You've heard it here. And once you hear the smoke song, it is already too late. Traversing the coastline, you can see many abandoned ships making up the home of the buildings for this well, Kosar community. Living in an area with so little natural resources, <laughs> the Leviathan people have had to turn to piracy to survive. Attacking passing delivery vessels and couriers, they pilfer the yeah, cargo. There's the, the sock rabbit from Omniverse. The sock he vendor. He had to get a new job. Yeah, he never gets a name. I think I named, named him in the breakdowns. I think it was Roy. Roy. He, he just seemed like a Roy. Yeah, I can yeah. see it. Oh, and traded back to Arrow oh, to go dive. for various supply drops. Though the company's poultry president has made many statements saying that he does not humor the thought he would ever negotiate with I love this. Because tw Twitter is real in, yeah. in Ben 10. <laughs> this happens all the time, too. Like, people just trying to, you know, in their positions of power, downplaying these horrible tragedies. And it's crazy. Dude, plus just having to actually come up with these stupid tweets... <laughs> It's really funny to me. like the the uh, him being accused by an apoplexian that does podcasts of mm -hmm. like uh, uh, just accusing him of working with them and everything. Hashtag cancel big cat app. Can you <laughs> imagine big app cat? That's what it was. <laughs> a podcast with an apoplexian. <laughs> Every it, it's literally just called. Let me tell you something. Let me and, tell uh, you something. <laughs> <laughs> the entire time, man, all this, all I, I can't do, I can't think of anything funny. <laughs> Damn it. That would be so good, though. I would listen to it. It would be good. Yeah. Oh. With pirates, there have been many leaked delivery records and video footage showing otherwise. Leviathans are known as the Aerophibian Predator not due to just their thieving ways, but because with so little local prey to hunt, they typically only eat twice a month, making any Aerophib. There's my soul. <laughs> uh, well, isn't that everything except your soul, technically? Yeah, I guess so. You forget after a couple thousand years. That's true. I'm right there with you, quite literally. Yeah, there we are. Right. Oh, oh, oh. There we are. We're so tired. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like I'm in a constant state of this for like as long as I can remember. To be in delivery per person just passing through. Every person just passing through become a long-awaited meal for a hungry Leviathan. On now, the hardest part about this shot, aside from the blood effect uh, coming up, was finding a smoke simulation that is this angle, where it's like all converging in the center. Oh. On average, about but it works. six Aerophibians a year go missing while off planet. Almost all are assumed to have been lost to the appetite of the monster waters. Yeah. You take. Yeah, market as four kids. <laughs> or become take out. Ha ha ha. Yeah, so I guess all the horses. I love how they all have different displays. You know, the true reason of that is that's never one of the assets that I save. I just remake it every time. I like that it's kind of different every yeah. time. Aeropella, a busy place to live for sure. But thankfully, we were just busy. We were Make just sure visited. And, and then this is you coming up here, right? The Aerophibian? Yes, the screaming. Yeah. The terrestrial exploration. Er this is Horus. Er 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 oh, it was just an Aerophibian. It's Taurus. By so, him. By <laughs> him. <laughs> Um, this is his I third know. appearance now. He appeared in the Inner episode. Then you see him cameo in uh, Big Chill's Homeworld, Kill Miss. And now this is his second, like, full on on screen appearance where you see he's the cameraman. So technically, he's been in all the episodes. He's just behind the scenes. Being courier. He must be delivering to Vulpin because he's clearly. <laughs> now, how we're seeing this shot. <laughs> There's another Taurus. Yeah, there's another Taurus. <laughs> there's, one, there's one stored behind each of his eyes. Yeah. Uh, no, this is just... It, it's just the audience window into the universe yeah. like any other show. Sometimes you just gotta... You just gotta go with it. Flying with his eyes closed. Oh, and he, wonderful. He, he cracked your eyelids. 
Well, if it's still functioning normally, can we do a report? Well, if it's still functioning normally, can we do a second take on wrapping up the report? It may just be a planetary reconnaissance report, but horse units have standards, you know. We do. Oh. We do now. Uh, of course. <laughs> I like how Taurus does try to run, but Horus is... Yeah, Horus has been buy there the merch. before. Yeah, buy the merch. These, Both of these are still available right now. I still need to get the poster. I, I, I have, have not the poster. yet. Oh, the poster actually fell. I put it behind my desk. Hold on. If you can't tell, the poster is a reference to the movie Jaws. Check it out. Heck yeah. Yeah, there it is. Oh. It's reflective. You can see the stream back at it. Look, there's Premiere. Can you there's see me OBS. in the stream? There's my tablet, which has the chat open. Um. Oh, and you can see the other posters hanging up, too. Um. Yeah, there you go. The reflections. Maybe I should just... <laughs> Ignore that. Maybe I should just get a giant mirror. Alright. Well, that was a good episode. Very, yeah. very precise, very short and simple, but still full of the same love and care uh, as everything that came before. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at the Taurus campaign, which is at 402. That's what's yes. up. We broke yes. 400. Thank you, everybody. I am so, so happy. Ah. Uh, Oh, I'm, man. I'm so glad we were able to break 400 before we the did end it. Stream. We did it. We actually broke 400. That's crazy, man. That's oh. insane. Oh, these actually now might get 98 made. more to go. 98 more. Yeah. Just 98 more. This was such. <clears throat> yeah. If we ever do this again, we should do a plushie because you only need to sell 200. Like oh, yeah. 500. It. It was admittedly a big ask. Like I get it. Trust me, I get it. Um. And the economy, man, it's 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 tough. But like, <laughs> it's the only reason I'm not buying the other ninety-eight. <laughs> yeah. How much would it be to just buy the remaining ninety-seven? Let's see, ninety-seven. Let's do times fourteen. You gotta take into account shipping and tax. Thirteen hundred dollars, one thousand three hundred fifty-eight dollars. Jeez. If you just wanted to buy the remaining, um, yeah, that's a no. bit out of my price range. Cause I got like six of them, and it was like around eighty. I think. Ooh, we're at 403 now. Yeah, looks looks like we got a lot of different supporters here. We got Luna Stardust, um, AK, Takamu, Kmer, Kmer, Drybones, Mimatar, uh, Mr. A, O, B, Bumbles, Hitman. Yeah, we got everybody up in here. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the campaign. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we still have about two hours left of the 5YL cameo contest, where if you, yourself, like as you, or your OC wanted to be one of the citizens of Bellwood in uh, the third episode of 5YL coming out next week, you can enter using the raffle rules, which are pinned in the chat or linked in the description. You just buy one of these, every purchase counts as an entry. We're gonna be randomly selecting six winners in two hours. Uh, after that, the contest is over, but you'll still have, be able to buy a Taurus keychain for the next nine days. Just, you know, if you wanted a keychain in order to help us out, get these made. Uh, ooh, we're at 404 now. We just sold another. Thank you very much, everybody. We just need to sell 96 more. So if you're not able to get one, I get it. But on the off chance, you know somebody that might, you know, call your friends, call your family. Even just sharing it on social media, you never know. It's a pretty neat design. It's a cute little robot boy. You know, he's cute. You could bring him around. He's got a keychain hook, so he's uh, portable. Uh, but it looks like we got one final episode left, uh, which is the grand finale, Zanelli. Um, I, so one, one thing I actually am curious about is people's fascination with Zanelli. Um, so why do you think it was such a, like a highly requested episode? Because of the pop-ups in the original series that said there are multiple lizard aliens, you already know people be like, Oh, well, Ben gets Arctiguana. How many other lizards does he have? And what can they do? And it, it, I know it's mainly because of the, the transformation uh, uh, count-up. 
or playlist or whatever. Um, I will say though, ever since the video has come out, it does seem like people like this one a lot because of like it being the pinnacle of and beyond stuff. Like there's so much lore, there's so many aliens. It has references to to the plot stuff that's going on. Da 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 da. Like it's it's a I personally not to toot my own horn. I think it is a, it's a solid season finale. It is. No, it it really is. Um, there's a lot to say about it, honestly. Like I'm I'm debating if I want to say it in the moment or get it all out right now. But it's just it's it's a solid episode. I feel like all of them are, are solid episodes, really. Like, it, it never feels like any episode of this, like, the product of it was half-assed. Like, there were some time crunches, there were some corners cut, there were some ideas shifted around, but it was never to a point where I felt like any of these episodes came out and I was like, this sucks, I wish we did better. Um, all these are great. Uh, and this one definitely takes the cake. It's, it's a nice harmony of all of the, everything that came before. Season two was gonna be ballin'. Um, I'm really excited to get into it. So, yeah, you want to just dive dive in right now? Yes, sir. Do some uh, do some Zanelli, Zabudel, Zabudel's a bottle, some Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, some Zoop Zop Zeep. That's not till season four. Oh yeah, and beyond season Earth, where he gets banished to Earth and has to spend the whole time on the planet, and he just does <laughs> different countries and different uh, different states, different towns. No, that'll be that'll be me doing a travel vlog. For us. Yeah, that actually would sound actually kind of cool. That would be fun <laughs> traveling around. I always felt like if I ever like won the lottery or something and like had like an insane amount of money, I would do the classic series road trip in the order the episodes came out too. No matter how impractical it may be, I would do it to just see what it so was cool, like actually. and see can you do all of this in three months? Let's find out. And then we gotta go to space for season three. Hell yeah. Yeah. There's Forrest. Forrest as a full puppet. Yeah, now. so it's hard to tell because he's in a he you haven't seen Forrest yet in the new art style. But here's his antenna's missing because of the lightning bolt from Sonorosia. And he's mm -hmm. still got the slightly acidicated uh metal helmet headplate thing from Methanos. <laughs> Why does this keep happening? Run system diagnostic. Well, great. Shit. Well, great. A broken portal projector and the communications are down. I can't even contact the plumbers for help. Oh, that's Nelly. That tourist trap is bound to have a communication system I could use. And I might as well catalog the planet while I'm there. It is my job after all. all, all. You just love Hi, Taurus. Get into place. <laughs> Good evening, extranet and multidimensional travelers. Welcome back to and beyond, where we plunge into the void and so explore now we're in ever expanding multiverse. Mm -hmm. I am your host, the R300 Orion. This is another one we did a full breakdown stream on. If you guys want to check it out, me, Horus. Today we'll be exploring the paradise planet of Znelli. Planet Zanelli has part. Yeah, we got the whole hey. all fit outfits. Yeah, I went into the whole spiel about this in the breakdown, but mm -hmm. we just wanted an excuse to draw animals, animals, aliens with clothes. <laughs> Uh, and this is my wife Yvonne voicing the All Fit Outfits announcer, doing her her best Old Navy impression. Partnered um, with Louis Vulpon to bring you All Fit Outfits. Did you plan a last minute vacation with nothing to wear? Maybe your planet's culture lacks the right clothes for relaxing climates, or do you just want to dress up for fun? Well, you with All Fit, we have a fun. fashionable line of tourist attire. Yeah, so these were all these two beings were chosen for like creatures that obviously shouldn't be wearing clothes to show you that anybody could be wearing clothes and it's fine. It doesn't matter. For everyone. Thanks to advanced micro adaptive fiber optic threads embedded in our trademark comfortable fabric texture, finding a funky fit for you will never be easier. Well, Say goodbye to planning out your wardrobe bye. because with reasonable prices and multiple shops located all over the planet, just fly on down and get everything you need right here on Zanelli. If you're tiny, gigantic, aquatic, what species is electric, that thing? Have 23 uh, lips. Let's come up with it. Uh, cur. Uh, Kuro, Kurana, Kurosaurus. What about like Skulkuro? Skulkuro. Skulkuro. Skulk. 
called Crow. Fizzy Sapien. Fizz Sapien. That's what Crystal said. That's funny. Ooh, a fist skull. A fist skull. A skull. It's a 